Hello everyone, uh, much like the people who couldn't find the initial start of the quest, it appears we couldn't find the start of the stream. We're live, um, apologies for that, we had a little bit of a blip um, trying to get things started um, on our streaming PC, so apologies for that, but uh, a couple of things I want to rattle off before we jump into why is mods doing mod jack here, and also a couple other things as well. So. Um, Couple of things to keep in mind, if you have completed UR it um, and you haven't got any treasure hunter keys, log out, log back in, you'll have them in your treasure hunter area so you'll be able to use them. So for everyone who's not sure um, how to get them, that's how you do it. If you haven't completed the quest yet, you'll get them when you complete the quest. It was something we hot fixed just a few moments ago. Um, so, uh, I have mods too, I have mod Jack. We also have a couple of art mods in the background um, who are going to be showcasing some more arty things. Um, so, in the past, we've had these art streams which have been very well received, and we thought, well, what a great opportunity to do it with them with mining and spiffing. So, um, mod Jack going to come to you first. Um, what are we kind of looking to see throughout all of this? So, we've got, I, I don't actually know your mod names. What are your mod names, you two? There we go, just for you. I've got my We've got a little sheet right there. Oh, mod Neil and mod Clumsy. There you go. Uh, so Mod Neil, you're going to be drawing the forge. So Mod Neil's a concept artist. He's going to be concept arting a forge live. And uh, Mod Clumsy is going to be modeling the yeah. necronium shield. Yeah, I'm going to be sculpting the necronium shield on ZBrush. Uh, so we'll pass over to them in a minute so they can explain what they're yeah. doing themselves, I think. Um, we're going to be doing, in the, mean, in the meantime, because it's going to take them a while, uh, we'll be doing just a general Q&A. I mean, we'll prioritize art questions, but feel free to ask us anything about mining and smithing. Yes, so uh, we'll just be throwing things in between. So a great opportunity for you all to uh, start asking questions and we'll try to answer what we can. Um, from a content and design perspective, how, what have you guys been up to since we last covered uh, mining and smithing? Well, personally, I've been on vacation for a couple of weeks in America. Oh, nice. So, Very um, nice. I'm just catching up myself my first day back. Um, I did put out a uh, latest draft of um, the uh, mining site map, um, how we're going to distribute the mining sites across the surface um, on Reddit earlier today. Um, had a bit of feedback on, on, on that one, but not very much. I think it might be on to maybe the, the last draft at this point. Awesome. What about you, my Jack? What have you been um, up to? We've been doing drop tables, and um, Tom's been implementing the Artisans Workshop design, um, which we tried to test today, but it turns out it's not quite working, and the XP numbers appear to be off by 10. And, off by uh, 10. Yep. Right. And uh, we often have uh, XP numbers off by 10 because in code, they're 10 times larger than they appear to players. Which, which people constantly get. So I say, oh, this should give 800 XP. So the developer types in 800 XP, and they should have typed 8,000 XP. So, so for, we quite often get off by 10 errors. And, that, and now since you've said that, people may now wonder why is XP capped to 200 million? It's because in essence, it's 2 billion. It's 2 billion. And obviously max into is 2.147. Yeah, exactly, yeah. There you go. If you're not aware of that, a little bit of a... Um, so we actually give XP to one decimal place, but you don't see that. Yeah. A little bit of a TIL there, if you haven't seen it already. Um, so... As a whole, I mean, we kind of obviously started late, but I think it's a great time for us to get started. So what we're going to do here is, we're going to come up to Mod Neil in just a moment. He's going to be uh, doing a little bit of concept for you guys live on stream, uh, related to something called the Dwarven Forge. So uh, very excited for that. So uh, in the meantime, of course, um, we'll switch mics on. If there's any questions, we'll try and jump in on. And we'll be going from design back to the couch and for other sections as well. So uh, stick with us on this one. Uh, so it should be awesome. So, Mont Neil, without further ado, let's throw over to you and uh, let's take it away. Okay. Hello, I'm Mont Neil, and this is Mod Clumsy. Hey. And um, before I go into Design of Forge, just wanted to show um, some of you guys some of the process we've gone into designing um, mining and smithing. So on my screen, I've got... Uh, I, I started work on the ores, and a friend Mike started working on the actual armor design. So let's just bring these up, and then these are kind of the, the first concepts of what the ore might look like and what you kind of have to use to process it down to the bar. So these are quite cool. Some of the, these are necrite heat from the um, bars of uh, souls and the ghostly essence to kind of mix together to make a necronium bar. And we also had a look at how to get the material looking um, quite kind of magical and cool. And then there's a light animica, dark animica rock. And to make the elder rune bar. So then, as as we kind of researched the different shapes we'd use for these, the different colours, I went and had a Mike, who's the concept artist who sit next sits next to me, had a go at designing some of the first uh, drafts of these of the armors. So they're the they're the um, materials, and then I think these are the first concepts for the armors. So these were a quick look at orichalcrum, uh, rune, um, necronium, and. Uh, We've actually got two dragons on this one, but this was kind of as he was, as he was figuring out which ones uh, we, we wanted to get. 
and that shouldn't say dragon I should say or calcum and then that that became a set which you modeled yeah, which there. I just modeled recently yeah yeah so these these actually are, these are all kind of made and modeled just kind of to show like what set would look like and, and to get the kind of materials and the yeah. kind of things that we wanted so that's the orichalcum weapons they're kind of like they're all cool we're all cool with those mm -hmm. and everything else you'll see and this is is kind of work in progress stuff and um stuff that isn't kind of the, the final yet but yeah most of these designs are still we're still like going back and forth see how they will translate into 3d yeah but yeah. you'll see some reasons why as well because some of the materials we I've, I've put on some of these armors are a little bit um uh, they're, they're dependent on the kind of if we can do the reflections and things like that and they might look blown out or they might yeah. look too dark or too light so if you have a look at some of these armors you can see that um there's the kind of like different tiers of the orichalcum uh, armor by mod king and z or mike as i call him uh, can i ask a favor yeah yeah sure. do you know when we showed all those armors just a few moments ago I yeah yeah these ones these yeah. yeah can we zoom in a little bit if that's okay oh yeah of course yeah. just so we can yeah. have a little look yeah. i thought yeah. everyone would be nice to see it up yeah. close because it looks absolutely amazing they're, they're lovely kind of like finish on them they're kind of like uh and these kind of this is the kind of effect we wanted to get the kind of like metal luster in it. Mm -hmm. um, these some of the, the these are kind of like circular designs for the rune. Uh, this was a kind of to get a kind of dark magical vibe going in the cronium because yeah. it's kind of getting metal and, and armor from kind of undead. Yeah. So One thing we also wanted to achieve in these in these different kind of armors was to not just make them different in, in types of materials but also in types of shapes. So have them like using circular shapes, triangular shapes. Uh, yeah, rectangular so, shapes. So yeah, for even from a distance, you can kind of catch a glance of the the shape language, and yeah. so that it's kind of very spiky. Um, that one's got kind of very pitted and kind of yeah. um, magical looking. This is very um, uh, circular, I suppose is the is the word. Kind of rings and lots of e ripples and echoes mm -hmm. of shapes. And then that was kind of one that was kind of going down the wrong path. So this was like a far eastern little plate armor. Um, we didn't want to go down that road, so it ended up more like. Uh, this, so this one and these one. Oh. So these are really pretty. Um, these are kind of Mike's armor. So I'll show you some of the ones that aren't, aren't quite final yet, but we're still working on. Let's go up to the Cronium. So these are. Yeah. This is actually. Is it you modeling this one? Yeah, that's yeah, the shield. This is the I'll be shield. Today. That you'd be yeah. modeling in the zebra. So this is that kind of the undead. Um, so they've got little kind of. I'm pointing, but no one can see that. <laughs> point, so that's I don't know why I'm doing that. And, and then there's the armor. I'll, I'll be kind of lower tier armor and then there's the kind of upgraded um oh, versions of it so they're a bit more flair a um, bit more kind of um uh, focus on these kind of cool materials mm -hmm. and, and kind of drifting particles and uh, kind of glow effect can we Is see the before and after again sorry i just i just feel like it needs to be emphasized just how just much like, of a visual difference it yeah, is. look at like that a bit more striking oh. yeah. play the the complementary of the of the green is the, is the red so it's kind of kind of going to be pretty cool mm -hmm. um that's so, that's so good <laughs> The next ones are, uh, these were like little concept tests for different kind of metals we were doing. So there's bronze and iron and I keep pointing to my screen, no one can see that I'm doing that. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, Everyone does it, don't worry. These are just kind of like the first, like, you know, like you do first drafts of things before we talk, it's like talking points for what, what we can do with different armor. So that these are kind of nice to have for us to kind of go like, what do we want from the, from the armors? Do we want something that's kind of slightly magical or slightly high level or, you know, yeah. can we even do these kind of like nice shiny metals with the, our new kind of uh, pipeline? And then as we're going towards, uh, that was Necronium, we're going towards Masterworks. This was like a meter scene if what could we get away with? Like Vader Black to Platinum White. Yeah. And I, this probably, you probably can't do this in the, in the engine without it blowing out and blooming. but. This, this was based off of yeah, um, you know, yang? What yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, his, his design was um, uh, had kind of flared. That there's, there's probably going to be quite a few more attempts at doing this one because the masterwork has got to be like really cool, like super, super cool. So it's not like this does look quite cool, but it's got to be like really obviously like the coolest thing. Mm -hmm. So we're going to probably do a couple of these and just kind of figure out. So th this this. Um, might get chucked away or, or like used for something else but might not be the masterworks armor someone Just mentioned a, uh with the shield um the upgraded shield is um with the particle effect is there yeah. expected to be a particle effect when it comes into the game yeah, yeah. there will oh, be oh yeah there yeah, will yeah. awesome for that one because of the nature of it you've got to find it from you know mining um, and and getting things from the undead it's, it's, it's kind of got to have that because it sells the idea of what, what it is mm -hmm. it's kind of um like these little kind of subtle glows it's because there's quite um Elder Ruins, like high level, um, 
And so I've kind of wanted to put a bit more kind of magical into it. Yeah. Just because, um, you know, that's that's quite a cool thing to do. Anyway, these these are the uh, Eldarine kind of uh, designs for the the kind of basic armor shield and swords, pickaxe, and then there's like the upgraded version, which is like kind of Greek theme to it. So it's again, it's got these circular shapes and themes. So it's like leather strap work and just kind of going from like that to, to kind of it kind of pulls out your silhouette slightly bigger. And then um, that was an early sketch for the uh, dragon. But Oracalcum, oh, keep saying dragon. Yeah, it says dragon. <laughs> but Oracalcum. Yeah. Everyone's at red, yeah, red metal. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's not dragon. Jeez. Yeah, uh, and then wow. yeah, and then these are some some Bane uh, items that Mike's done. These again, these, with the little borders around it, it means it's more like final, so it's like yeah. it's approved. So the stuff that you see with the white background stuff I've done is is just me drawing stuff. Um, not to be that that person, just for everyone watching who's saying, can't hear them, you just need to turn your volume on your Twitch player up and you'll be okay. Others have done okay. it and it's fine. You're, you're fine, by the way, just to clarify. Okay. Oh, yeah, this is amazing. This oh, is, uh, wow. Uh, this is Bane, yeah, really Bane Final Tier. Yeah, yeah, this is this is lovely. This is like based off of, you know, Gladiator yeah. and yeah. things like that. So it's kind of got this real heavy set look to it. And if we can get that purpley blue, that's fantastic. I'd love to see that in, 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 in rendered out. And... Um, and these were like the super, super early like material tests. Like, could we get some kind of uh, effects on, on things? Yeah. This is like a basic, you know, just, just a hand axe. But if you put that metal on it, how, what would make a basic thing look cool? So, you know, these kind of like deep contrast reflections in the red or these concentric ripples in, in this kind of like cyan blue. And then these kind of almost like kind of dark flame effects on Bane. If we could get that, it's a bit more like a test thing for us to figure out if we can do things. And these like little swirly... Uh, Keep pointing to them on a swirly swords <laughs> on the uh, on the necronium. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the state of the armor for now. And then if I go and I'm gonna close this down. Bit of a tight workspace to work in, understandably. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a look at the forge here because we've we've got some work from the dwarves. Uh, Dave did this. Uh, these dwarven kits. That's Monty Barker, right? Yeah, Monty Barker. Yeah. yeah. He did these kits. Oh, I should say mod names. I'm not, not used to it. It's my first stream, everyone. <laughs> <Be> gentle. <laughs> then the how he's doing. He's doing great, by the way. So, um, yes. so we got. Um, yeah, these 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 things were done quite a while ago, actually. I think if I go back to bridge. Right. Am I able to get mod Jack and mod Stu just to answer something for me a second? That's yeah, okay. yeah, of course. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, um, cut, yeah I'll, I'll just find things. Yeah, that's right. So just to clarify, um, earlier on, um, they saw the axes. They're saying, are the axes going to be upgraded as a result of this update? Or is it still going to be... Pickaxes. As in axe hatchets. Uh, it was in the concept, so I they just printed it up. I think oh, no, we're no, no, not no. planning no, on doing new tiers of hatchet. Okay. <laughs> because that would require a wood cutting rework to work. Yeah, yeah. That, that there was, will uh, be new mining picks, but there won't be new hatchets as we currently have it planned. That's what I just thought I wanted to clarify because obviously we're showing. Sure. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was just a purely a material test awesome. picture. It wasn't, it wasn't a request or anything. Uh, it was just us doing it. Um, yeah, so these dwarven buildings, these go back quite a while because we, for Kelda Grimm, I don't know why a giant banana woman's popped up. <laughs> I, that's really weird. I don't know why that happened. Well, that's a banana boat. Um, um, okay. And let's go. <laughs> there you go. I'm sorry. Why, why I'm just being completely thrown off. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that happened. It's a giant banana. Uh, why not? Why not? It's it's really cool. Yes. Um, let's go. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Anyway, oh, back, man. These, these were like... 2012, I did these these like dwarven designs. So these are the shape the, the shapes were. Um, I hope the banana one doesn't come back. But <laughs> I c hang on, I'm not, I usually yeah. Maybe use the mouse. You got yeah, it. Yeah, use the mouse. This is why I can't rely on pens as mouses sometimes. Yeah, it's it works with the mouse. Cause I use the wheel on the mouse. Um, yeah, so these are the kind of shapes that we had for the for the doors. The kind of tools and cut shapes, and the angles were very much like 45 degrees and things like that. And then from this, we developed the concepts out to these buildings, um, these are like going to be the dwarven buildings that might have gone into Keldergrim if that was a project that was chosen at okay. the time, but it, it wasn't, and that was back in 2012. So I'm going to take these... So this was for about six years ago then? Yeah, wow, okay. about six years ago. But the, the designs are like, um, the, the, the actual, the way we designed them is still kind of the way we design them now. So these are quite blocky, they're, they're proportionally they're quite square. They've got like lots of inlay and lots of trim and, and like subset metals and things like that. So uh, I'll be using that to design the that kind of method to design the forge because that's what 
um, our dwarves would look like if yeah. they if they came to life. So I've I've taken the concepts that I needed from uh, from Mob Parker's uh, uh, file, and I've got the uh, this is like a screen thing from Varric of um, that Lu uh, Luke's given me. I don't know his mod name. So you don't mod Luke F. On Luke F. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And um, from here, I'll be designing just this little area here, but it's going to be um, I'm going to take these shapes and then actually try and. Um, draw away. So I'm going to do a Bob Ross and just start drawing <laughs> and see what, see what comes from it. So uh, brace yourselves, everyone. Here we so, go. So uh, let me just uh, get rid of and move that out of the way. And so I'm going to need something that's got a kind of furnace, a uh, little door at the bottom, and a kind of, ex kind of chimney that comes away, and then an anvil to the side. So the way I'd kind of draw that, I've got a little pallet here. So obviously you use that palette, I presume, to get that colour, I presume, yeah? Yeah, I've just nicked these colours from here, so I've got shadow colour and a kind of like mid middle tone colour, so I'm just going to basically just kind of, kind of block in a shape. Um, could be anything, doesn't really matter, just block it in, and then I'm going to pull that about and make, uh, just kind of like choose a cool shape, so if I like this kind of hexagon, I might say I want a, a kind of inlaid part here, and I can kind of blur these edges. And just create a kind of framework for the. <laughs> here come the happy little comments now. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. Little happy moments. That's what, <laughs> that's what I want. Um, so it's just like an overall silhouette is what all I, is what I look for at the start. A lot of people kind of draw stuff or, um, you know, just kind of like you can, what you can just draw on on it and just kind of like draw. Say I, I want the, the furnace kind of to come in here. And then I want a kind of like little doorway to come in here, and then I'll pick the colours and um, and just kind of draw them in and say like I want a few steps coming down because this is for dwarves, but it's also you know you you as a player will be here doing this, so let me just grab that. This might get a bit slow in a minute because it's kind of how I don't even understand how you're moving this quickly. Genuinely, what in the, oh jeez, so, wow, that's so cool. So I'm going to put in a a kind of anvil over here. And that can come up. Let's change that back to there. And then this is going to be a little kind of anvil, maybe with like a dwarven. Um, the thing is, what you do is to not be precious with your concepts. So it's just kind of like be prepared to just hack into stuff. You know, just delete. This stuff. is why they're concepts, right? It doesn't have to be like, oh my yeah, god, the it best doesn't art have to in the be world, amazing. as long as it sets yeah. the idea of what you want. Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, it's good if you can make it look really good, but um, you know, you just kind of want to be just going through your brain and just trying to find um, some kind of cool uh, idea or some kind of cool like sentiment that you just kind of um, that sells the idea so if I want I feel a little kind of what's this it's hard to talk and draw at the same time it's understandable to be fair. <laughs> yeah they're asking for a hand cam yeah they want to, they oh, want to right, see a cam, cam. Of, uh, okay. I, I don't know what we can do no he did it temporarily can you really? Can you? Can You've you make that work? <laughs> are you going to just hold the camera? As, gonna hold the camera. You're going to do the most manual production I've ever seen and hold really? the camera yeah, do, just yeah. so we can. There you go. So okay. there's your hand cam it's chat. Hand cam. Don't say we know what it looks like. It, it looks good. That's a good job. I'm drawing stuff very fast. It's a good job. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm basically getting in these kind of shapes. So the kind of the ratio is going to be fairly square, and I want a kind of. I'm drawing this kind of front on because I just all I'm interested in. In, in, is the design of it is like what is it going to look like so I'm going to have a kind of say if it had a chimney that might join up if I zoom in on this these all might join together and go up to the central chimney which might look quite cool nice. so I'm going to just kind of put that in this is the maybe if this was the you know over on the far right I would kind of draw these pipes in they could come across I could put more decoration on them later and then I could put a kind of artificial front on the front of that, which gives it a kind of chimney shape. So uh, what board is this? People are just wondering what uh, what um, hardware you're using here. Oh, this is a Cintiq, um, which is just a flat screen um, by Wacom, which is, okay, Wacom, I'm sure, I don't know about advertising them, but they are pretty much... <laughs> The, it's uh, fine. Like, uh, we, the, trust me, we have drinks and everything on our stream. It's fine. Okay. Not a problem there. So um, yeah, Wacom and the Cintiq, did you say? Yeah, this is the Cintiq is is this a twenty something uh, inch Cintiq? Um, wow. Okay. And it's it's nice. It's about a three, I suppose, is the size it is. And then for for drawing on, it's kind of if you've done a lot of drawing, it, then you'll be used to that kind of size. And it's quite handy. Um, and obviously, for this, 
for this forge, I think it's going to depend on how ornate you want it to be, is that you could add like a dwarven kind of face on the top yeah. to over overshadow it, or if I get in, start painting in some shadows and things. But this should look kind of drastically different by the time I finish with it. I'm just putting in my, you know, like landmarks of where you want things to go. And then, so if I grab that. That could be a pipe that goes off to the side. What? So, I, I just find it fascinating just watching art being made on the fly. I love it. Absolutely love it. I think it's amazing. It's such a, like, a talent to do, in my opinion. And it's something that I've said it many times. We've done the streams. We don't do it enough. And I feel like in situations like this, it really helps showcase just how it's done. And I love seeing the process of stuff like this. It's just it's, awesome. It's it's a funny thing to do, I think, because most artists kind of t kind of privately do do these kind of things. But it is interesting to do it, it with a kind of knowing that someone's watching because it's kind of like <laughs> what do what would I do and kind of what you know kind of where would I take these shapes and, and you know take these kind of uh, designs and just spinning the canvas um, to kind of use some of the designs that I've got. Someone said, um, what is your base art board size from creating things? We said A3, it's like the size of A3, right? Is that correct? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, do, you, do you mean my, my the actual image size itself? This is probably massive because I, I wanted it to be able to zoom 76, in. 80 by 43, 20. Yeah. There you go. That's wow. A, okay. That's about double because I wanted other reference on the screen, but that's probably too much. What I've done is I've set my resolution to 288. So screen res is 72. So if I turn that to 72, that would... Yeah, like turn that number to 1080, so it would just turn yep. into screen red. But yeah, I've kind of like it's four times the size it needs to be. Um, uh, it doesn't need to be as big as this. It's just because um, I, I wanted uh, lots of um, reference on the picture on the screen at the same time. So if you're wondering why there's a camera in the bottom right and why Mod Jack and Mod Stu are there, it's because they're just as entertained by this as well. And, uh, we thought we'd actually, you know, it gives them excuse not to uh, slack off when off camera as well. I don't, I don't actually know where my mic's on. Is it, well, it's about to be on now. Hold on. Um, now it's on. Oh, it's on now. Okay. There I was, go. Okay. I was just not muttering to myself in case my mic was on. <laughs> we can so, put Stu and Jack's mic on. They can just. I've been noting. It. I've been noting down questions that people have been asking. Is there anyone you want to jump cool. in while we let? Uh, uh, someone just asked, uh, "How do you get the art style consistent?" Um, oh yeah. How do you get the art style consistent? I always get what kind of working. We've got lots of little documents and bibles of like how we do texture and stuff like that it's something we keep striving towards because every artist is inherently different and it is really hard thing to do so um we i mean i i try and i've got the kind of quite a painterly style kind of paint everything uh some people kind of got more of a drawing style so they they draw it's more delineated um it's yes yeah, one of the hardest things and it's kind of uh something we're always trying to work towards and you know we don't always get it right but we do try because <laughs> it's important for us to kind of get stuff, stuff to, you know, to the final pipeline. By the time it gets to you modeling guys, I mean, you, yeah. you, you kind of pull in that extra bit of effort at the yeah. end. So everything's going through the same texture size and everything's going to have, have a kind of, that, that's going that yeah, to Yeah, usually we try to follow the yeah. concept art as much as possible when we're texturing. Um, but yeah. Um, so we can see, in, like in the concept art, we can see that the Bane armor and the Elder Rune armor are, look different because they were drawn by different concept artists. But when they go through the, the modeling, they'll come out with a consistent style to them. Yeah. Yeah. So in essence, it's kind of like taking that inspiration from the concept and making it one unified style then. Uh, no, it's all right. We'll talk about them later. I'm not sure about the borders on this. So on average then, I mean, something like this, How um, on average, obviously without having the pressure of stream watching you and so yeah, on, like, what's, what's your average time-ish, would you say, yeah, for something like this? Maybe just like, just to get a first concept out, probably like an, an hour of just sketching, just to kind of okay. go like to someone, this is the idea I've had. So like, I, I'm not enjoying that doorway thing so much, so <laughs> I might try something else. It's, this is a nice shape, this kind of like... T shape thing, and that's the other thing is when you're drawing something, it doesn't you don't necessarily have to keep it, you can just draw another thing because if it doesn't take you very long, you can just do another one and just kind of say, like, I like I'd rather it, you know, you came up to a forge, and then this was like a kind of like heavy duty lock shape, and then I had you had some steps coming up to it at the bottom, and then these slooped away. This is just kind of rough sketch, and you can kind of erase the bits you don't want afterwards. Someone mentioned about the uh, brushes. Um, is this a custom brush you pack, or is it just your default? Uh, this is a custom brush. I think it's called Chisel Chalk. Chisel Chalk. Uh, which is what I named it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 
there you go. Yeah, there's all, there's lots of brushes that I've made over the years. Um, there's like this this. Oh, so all of these literary ones you handcrafted yourself then, basically. Yeah, a lot of them. Awesome. Some of them. Some of them have been stolen off other people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> shamelessly. No, that's that's a shameless uh, yeah. admi admittance right there. Fair Plectrum. enough. Yeah, there's there's loads of them. Um, awesome. I I tend to you only you only end up using like one or two though, to be honest. This one's really nice. These art pens which I've made, which are kind of like good for painting things. So you kind of choose it, and it creates a wedge. Then as you change the brush around, you can paint like horizontally or vertically. <coughs> Which is nice. So you can kind of, it's really good for painting things very quickly. You can just kind of knock stuff in. But the um, chisel chalk, which is the the one I use, it is good for just laying in like just just kind of soft, softest shadows. And then I use a blur, which is the X button, which is smudge, you know, smudge in Photoshop. Um, probably isn't the X button, that's probably, probably mapped that to X. <laughs> it's probably something else. Um, and then you can just use that to soften the shadow. So you can kind of say, like, oh, that shadow tapers in. And there's, there's a hard edge there, and I can make that bit lighter to make a surface that points up, and then put a shadow underneath it, and then blend those shadows down so it looks like it's kind of this volume's coming towards you, you know. And eventually, you'd, you'd use more than two tones, and you'd make the whole shape come towards or push back with uh, with lighting, and choose kind of a lighting angle. But initially, for the first concept, it is purely about like what what am I drawing? What what are the shapes that I'm trying to create? And uh, and then you go from there. And so if, I, if I'm happy with like a little sketch I've done, I can either like draw it with a line tool pen, which is this kind of pen. So I'd probably draw it out like a little sketch. What I like to do is draw it on paper. Yeah. Because it's like, it's just really um, a great way of doing something. But on the computer, I'll, 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 use, a, I'll use the kind of brushes because they you may as well so I'm just trying to figure out if I want kind of like columns either side of this, 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 um, columns either side of this building. So for people asking oh. about gear stats and everything, we will answer that when we're back on the couch before we come ready to come over to more clumsy for his modeling bit. So, uh, keep yeah. an eye out for that. When we're back on the couch, we'll talk about some of the gear and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, the next phase I'd probably do is if I'd, I'd probably kind of go in and just put like where I wanted the metal. So if, if this was like a little door for, you know, you, where you would put the fuel in for the, for the things, you could kind of like put that in and then figure out, you know, what's the dwarven uh, looking handle look like, and then just kind of like start painting more more kind of the final values of the design on it, and then you can figure out. I think, where think you just like, answered that question, John. Where your little designs will go. <laughs> you just started drawing with color on it. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's someone asking if you usually start working from. Like black and white values. Oh right, yeah. These or are these are the, well. It looks like I'm saying black and white, but these are these are color. This is like a slight cyan. And this is um, kind of blue, dark blue. Yeah, th there's no point in working in black and white in Photoshop because you can just do this, and then it is black and white. So it's magic of technology. And the other th the reason I say that is not not as a joke. It's just that it is harder to add color to a genuinely uh, kind of colorless document. Yeah. Yeah. It genuinely is, is not worth doing it. You may as well do it in a dark colour of some sort and then use it in a light yeah. colour of some sort. And then you, um, by the way, to make it go that is is just to make it go black and white, there's a proof set up. And by default, it's working CMYK. Mm -hmm. And you can change that. Can I just say, I love how you're actually, just for people who might want to get into this, how you give yeah, advice and stuff. I think that's amazing. Yeah, just for people. Um, this is grey perceptual. So that's perceptual. I mean, it's how you, see, how you would kind of see the colours. And then grey can 1.8. Um, awesome. And that's that's kind of a handy little hint. The other brilliant thing about this way of painting is you can check your values and when you select your colour, uh, it will still, it, it will the still show the colour and you can also paint with the colour. So if you come back, oh, uh, that's cool. you come back, it will, ah. it will still be in colour. Yeah. So that's like a real handy hint for, for anyone who's doing a bit of shading. Um, yeah, so I mean, I'm at the stage now. I'm just kind of probably gonna noodle and move bits about, fiddle with it, and erase the edges, and, and kind of like I'm an hour about it for a bit. Because um, that's that's the other bit about drawing, isn't it? A bit of fun. It's just it's just, just kind of like you got to sit back and kind of go like, actually, you know, do I like that? It's a bit simple for me. I think it's a bit. There's another question here. Why CMYK instead of RGB for digital painting? Oh, I think it, just by default, uh, Photoshop will do CMYK because it assumes you're trying to print something. Yeah, it's also better for ah, printing. Yeah, exactly. it's for and printing. And also, you guys, you, do, you guys do end up printing stuff yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, will, we will print stuff, but um, yeah, generally, we 
it's it's more for like can I just say I know, I know you say you don't like doing it in black and white, but I love how you're still doing it in black and white anyway. Oh with yeah, the colors. I forgot. To, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just casually doing it in black and white anyway. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you just kind of you get on with it, and you and then um, is another thing. This is a really useful thing tip for Photoshop. So any Photoshop users um, watching this is that this little lock layer transparency. I know if a lot of people wouldn't know just that bound to a. Um, if you can see where my mouse is. Yeah, yeah, they can. That bound to a um, shortcut key is invaluable because you can just turn it off. And then draw something, turn it on, and you can draw within that thing. It's just lovely because you can just kind of like you know, quickly create a kind of, you know, like that's a bracing part that's going to hold this pipe up. So, yeah, the reason yeah. why, again, just to clarify, we use um, that style is because we do often print concept art around the office, sometimes for giveaways, sometimes it's yes. just for demonstration. Yeah. So, it's a lot easier to have that. It's like so free decoration. Free decoration. We just put it up all around the office. As yeah, we just cover yeah. it all. Like, <laughs> this is the binding yeah. smithing wall. Whoosh, do yeah. it all there. Also, um, yeah. So I don't know if you want to talk more about the mining smith and, and have it on in the background of the photo because I'll just probably be refining. Sure, it a bit. Or, 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 we'll, or we'll pop back to the you. couch. We'll have a few questions. I'm come to you, clumsy. If you're okay with that. Uh, yeah, sure. And I'll come to you from Molly. All right, let's go back to the cool. couch. I'll go awesome. down these guys. And we'll be with you Here he comes. these angles because these are all fun. Right. Oh man, I, lo I love art stuff. It's great. You're going to do something with your microphone that makes Shed sad now, aren't you? Yeah, I'm going to literally make Shed sad because uh, this is not what he wants from a professional <laughs> uh, mic clipping perspective. But I have to go. I can't, I've got to get run back and forth. Um, right. So. Um, That's such a sad, sad looking man over there. It's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> So um, we'll leave the screen up of Mod Neil working away. And while doing that, we'll kind of talk about some of the stuff we've, uh, we've shown there. So they've been talking about the gear and its stats and everything else. So in an overview, what is Mining and Smithing looking to add? To what levels? And so uh, on? Yeah, so this is, this is documented in the design document. So do go have a look um, if you're interested. So broadly speaking, there's, there's two kinds of armor in the rework. There's the leveling armor, which is what you're going to be making to level your smithing skill. That's all the stuff that they're showing you. Coming to your rescue. There you go. Huh? Yep. There you go. Um, and then there's um, masterwork armor, which is not for leveling, and it's going to give bad XP because we don't, we specifically don't want people making it for XP. Um, and, and there are two tiers of masterwork armor. So the, sorry, I'll, I'll finish the leveling armor first. So you've got your, you've got your tiers uh, 60, 70, 80, 90. They will have, there'll be tank armor. At the, at the top end, they'll have artificially lowered stats. So the, the stuff that requires 90 smithing to make and 90 defense to wear won't be as good as 90 tank gear. Okay. We are currently debating uh, and discussing whether it degrades and how much it degrades by. I'm hoping we can get away with having it not degrade with the justification that being tank armor, it's not that good anyway, but I may not, that may not be okay with the combat council, so we're having that discussion at the moment. Yep. But for the most part, we're not expecting that gear to be particularly useful, that's not the point. It's for leveling smithing. And because of the way the smithing mechanics work, where you, as of the... So, if you played the beta, you, you know you could decorate and destroy the armor for more XP. We've rethemed. it's the same mechanic, but we've rethemed it with the Artisans Workshop design. Okay. So it's burial armor in the Artisans Workshop. You go to the Artisans Workshop with your fully upgraded armor, and you go to the dwarves at the back of the room and you destroy it to make burial armor. Um, and that gives you very good XP. So, so the smithing skill inherently destroys that armor. It's not intended for, um, is the chat going mad? No, it's they not just intended love, they for actually the using, if that makes sense. So, because there's already so much armor in the game. Okay. Your basic bandos is gonna be better for the most part. So in essence, if you're looking at um, the XP, at the expense of armor being destroyed, then that's the way to go. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so, uh, yeah. And then you've got this masterwork armor, which gives bad XP. So you've got masterwork armor, which can be made purely with the mining and smithing skills, but it's extremely time consuming to make. That is level 90, tier 90 power armor, almost exactly the same Ooh. as malevolent. So you can literally make your own tier 90. Make your own tier 90, but it will be very time consuming and very expensive to do. Got it. So practically speaking, if you want it for the combat stats, malevolent will probably still be cheaper. So we're not expecting people to make masterwork because it's now good. But then there's upgraded masterwork, which is tier 92. That's a piece of masterwork armor combined with pieces of Torva and Malevolent. So let's clarify, this is tier 92 armor. Tier 92 armor, requires 90 to wear, 92 stats. Um, so this will be the best power armor in game. Oof. We recently, oh, recently changed the design based on player feedback, so it doesn't degrade to dust, it degrades to broken. Awesome. You'll repair it with more masterwork armor because that's supposed to be the sink for smithing. Now in all of this, 
we don't know how the economy is going to work out. Of course. If no one is making masterwork armor, the price of masterwork armor on the G will be so high that no one can afford to use it. So if that happens, we'll have to look at the design and maybe simplify it, change it, something. We will be paying attention to it because we just can't work out how it's going to work in practice. This is more complex than previous boss drops where it's literally just you get the drop, you combine it with some other stuff, there's the armor. We know roughly how that economy is going to play out because we've done it a lot before. Yep. In this case, we've never done anything quite like this. Uh, so does we'll the new masterwork armor degrade? Someone said there. Does the new masterwork armor degrade? Yes, it'll degrade to the, broken. To degrade to broken. Got so, it. So masterwork and upgraded masterwork will degrade to broken. Awesome. Uh, you repair the upgraded masterwork by just combining it with a new piece of masterwork armor, which is intended as a sink for masterwork armor. So I like how you use an item on another, uh, the exactly. same item, uh, item on the same item to yeah. repair. Okay. Exactly. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned uh, beta. Um, is there any potential future beaters at all? Like yes, we're, we're, we're planning another one towards the end of the year. Okay. Um, we don't have a final date for it yet. Um, someone, someone in the chat was saying like, we were holding it back to keep people playing. That is very much not true. We want to get. Someone also said, Stu and Stu and Jack, get back on quests. And we said, yes, we'd love to do that. We're going to get this. We we'll get the rework done, um, but we're not rushing it specifically. We're not trying to like, get a batch one out as quickly as possible. Yeah. The, the thing about the rework is the changes that we've made break a whole lot of content. And we've got to fix those things. We can't just leave them. We can't leave them broken because in a lot of cases they will literally just crash the game. So we're going to be doing a second beta to check for that sort of thing. But because of that, the beta kind of has to be feature complete. Yes. We can't just not address parts of, parts of the game because if we don't, then the beta will crash when you try and play it. You go try to do some obscure thing and it will crash. So... There's a lot of work that needs to be done. Um, to get to that point. Right, a couple of quick live ins. Can you augment the tier 92s? Uh, yes. Um, okay, awesome. And dice? Uh, Will it be diable? Maybe. Probably not. Maybe. So, this is obviously, so to clarify the die process, just so everyone's aware, obviously, die models nowadays, because of augmentations and so on, there's a lot to yeah. do for one die in that it sense. It sounds like a straightforward job, but it's actually a huge, huge, huge So, it's if the time is there, I presume. Essentially, yeah. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Um, I kind of want to talk about the post you made, Stu, um, just before we come over to uh, Clumsy for modeling. Um, so, in essence, if people haven't seen this post, can you kind of clarify what this post is, what it goes into, and so on? Yeah, sure. So, basically, um, the mining sites in, in the game currently uh, just go up to, to Rune for the most part. You've got some edge cases like concentrated coal and things, for, but basically, uh, mining sites go up, up to level 50 um, in, in the new one, and we're going to be adding in a, um, a few other tiers of armor. Um, and the uh, ores that you use to create them and the catalysts that you use with those ores to make the bars. Um, so it's, it's about looking at where the mining sites are in, in the game at the moment, uh, seeing which, which ones are redundant, which ones we can repurpose for higher tier ones, um, and also looking at the distribution of um, catalysts and primary ores across the world and see, well, can we put this, is it better to have this one on, on this opposite side of the continent, this, on, this side of the continent, so that you um, have travel back and forth, but also with things like how prolific teleports are isn't really that big of a deal anyway. Yep. Um, one of the requirements that I have is that the uh, that a skiller should be able to, to do this just by, by leveling the smithing skill, and that shouldn't uh, re require the player to have completed any other quests or anything like that to access certain ones. So they all need to be um, they need to be a primary source of each one of the, um, the ores up to level ninety. So. Um, so like thematically, it would be nice, for example, if uh, light. Um, Animica, the uh, level 90, was uh, Seren themed and went to something like Prithinus or the Elven Lands, with that being all quest locked, that doesn't really fit too well with that. Um, so Light Animica is more, is more about um, Elder God energy, so that gives a bit more of a leeway. So we've revised some of the laws we go along just to also looking at the geography. Um, so basically it's just been about looking at those um, different attributes, the, the, the theme, the placement, um, what things are within the free-to-play area, um, how accessible things are, wh uh, what things are quest-locked, um, and trying to juggle all those different components and make a map that um, satisfies some of those requirements. Um, and then I've been putting it out in several iterations, getting player feedback. Um, as with when this tends to happen, you usually have a lot of contradictory feedback, but I've been trying to um, accommodate as, as many points of view as possible. So I have something that it may not necessarily satisfy everybody, but hopefully satisfies most. And we'll see how we go from there. Someone's asking, are oh, your shorts tier 92? <laughs> yeah, I, I apologize for the shorts. I wasn't aware I was going to be on stream today. Don't need so. to apologize. <laughs> There's no need to I mean, apologize. Should, I mean, you should boldly own the shorts. <laughs> 
Um, I think so, it's asking the glow of my white thighs, I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So if we look at tier 50 to tier 90, in a nutshell, um, if you can remember, um, what is the, so we obviously we saw the concepts of armors and so on with their names. So what is the name of each armor? What tier do they correspond to? Um, so 50 is rune still. Uh, 60 is oracalcum, which is, uh, no, we haven't got the concept out. We, someone was asking for this year. Again, we did actually put that concept art out a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, oh, I, I should pimp the Discord, actually. <laughs> um, there's an official RuneScape Discord. I don't know if you guys can post a link for it. Um, um, there's mining and discuss mining and Discord, mining and discord.gg slash yeah. rs. We'll That's pop right. it in the uh, Twitch chat for you, so you guys can jump um, on that. If you want, like, I, Discord is great for us because I can chat to players while I'm on the loo or <laughs> uh, just at home. Just your live yeah. feedback. Supposed to be watching, supposed to be watching the children. Instead, I'm chatting on Discord with That's players. That's even a joke. Yeah, I know <laughs> it's not a joke. <laughs> Um, the problem with the official forums and stuff is we have to do them in the office. But uh, Yeah, uh, we kind of have that flexibility with Reddit, but not the live commenting yeah. as Discord provides. It's so if you, want to, if you want to ask us questions, feel free. Twitter, Discord, Reddit yeah. is a good place to ask questions. Um, so tier 60 is Oracalcom. Yes, so the, the Oracalcom concept art we put out a while ago, I, don't, I didn't get it ready for John to show now. But, That's um, fine. That is, that is Dragon Armor. Now, uh, so, now, some players suggested, I think, a different way. I've been thinking about the law that the distinction, oracalcum is the metal, and it's the metal that dragon armor is made of. What I'd written is, uh, it hasn't been worked in dragon fire. A player suggested it should be dragon kin breath, which I think is quite neat, the idea that dragon kin just heated it themselves. And, and that's what's so special about dragon armor as opposed to oracalcum. Mm -hmm. So that's roughly the lore idea there. It's the metal, but not the method, because obviously getting a live dragon kin to heat it for you is not really practical. Mm. Um, tier 70. Tier 70 is Necronium. This is uh, metal that, ha that is left over from the armies that died in the God Wars. So okay. the God Wars had huge massacres, massacres of people died, particularly in 4 and 3, but elsewhere as well. Um, huge numbers of soldiers Wham. would die. Beautiful time. Yeah, mm -hmm. Necronium, there we go. Uh, and um, so this is, this, is, this is metal and armor that already existed in the God Wars. God Wars was also a time of tremendous magical energy. Gods were firing off spells and just wiping out people en masse. Um, so the combination of those two things, ancient armor combined with ancient magic, all just sort of stewing in the ground for several thousand years. People come across it now. They God, that upgraded one looks so good. Sorry, I, I was yeah. jumping away. I always have to so, mention it. It looks so, so it's, good. So it's, I mean, it, it, this doesn't have any real mechanical effect, but the, the notion is essentially that this is sort of powered by all the death and souls and magic. Um, and the idea is that it's thematically similar to Barrows. Um, it's not, I mean, the Barrows weren't buried underground for seven, several thousand years. I guess they sort of were, but you know what I mean? Yeah. They weren't literally buried. Um, uh, but the idea is that it's a sort of death-themed, green-themed, you know, that it, the, the association is there even if the process is a bit different. T-80. 80. 80 is Bane. Bane. Has Go been on. controversial. We had a nine-hour discussion a few weekends ago. All right, talk to me about that in um, a nutshell. Try and summarize. Well, the, 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 the controversy behind the, Bane. The controversy is whether or not it should be locked behind Wild Gothic Sleeps. I've got a question. Um, no, Rick actually, Sorry. So I look at this, I kind of see comparisons to Mithril armor in a way. Is that something that's come up or is this just me? Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Uh, the, the, I think that there's, it has a very distinctive texture that you can't quite make out in that concept art. But if you bring up, can you bring up the Bane weapons? It's much clearer on the weapons. It has a very distinctive texture feel that I don't think looks like Bane, uh, looks like Mithril at all. And the armor itself doesn't look like Mithril. So I'm not too, I'm not too worried about that. Um, go back to Wild Gothic Sleeps. Did you, so what well, was so, the... So the, the, it's uh, Ritual of the Majorat. So the, uh, sorry. the controversy, plot-wise, Bane is trapped behind Ritual of the Majorat. Yes. And the, and the plot of Ritual of the Marjorat, it doesn't really state this, but it, it heavily implies that Bane weaponry is going to be important in the oncoming fight against the Dragon King. It's, it's, I mean, it's, 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 well, it didn't save the Ketsians, but it's what the Ketsians hoped would save them, uh, which ultimately didn't. But it, it strongly implies in the plot that this is going to be a handy thing to have. Um, the problem, of course, is that our philosophy on, on, on quest prerequisites keeps changing, and we are unlikely to lock future... Dragon King content behind Ritual of the Majorat. Right. If that's true, if it's not locked behind Ritual of the Majorat, then either Bane isn't locked behind Ritual of the Majorat or Bane isn't in future Dragon King content. Those are the sort of choices, if you see what I mean. So uh, for me, this is a great opportunity to sort of take an existing piece of metal that has a great deal of significance, albeit it's only mentioned a tiny bit, but the significance is huge, within the RuneScape lore and sort of bring it more to prominence. Because the way the Sixth Age works, all Fifth Age content has technically been completed, 
So even if the player hasn't completed Ritual of the Marjorat, technically they have completed Ritual of the Marjorat because they've completed World Wakes because that the player is the World Guardian is the foundation point of the Sixth Age. So in essence, what was they've decided? got Bane armor? Yeah, uh, we, we, we're doing it. Yeah, okay, it's do great. It. Right. It's great. It, it helps. It, it, it's good because it means the Tier Eighty equipment, if we let it be tuned, has uh, a use to it. Because I was saying, you know, this armor's mostly cosmetic. It's it's not really going to be that useful because yep. there's so much gear in game. Actually, the way we currently have the mechanics, a Tier 80 Bane weapon, which is tuned against its target, we're currently thinking is 25% damage bonus, no accuracy bonus. That's what we're currently envisaging as the mechanics for it. Will actually be better than a dry gore against its tuned target, which actually gives it a legitimate mechanical purpose within the game, and I really so, like that. So you otherwise, have, these weapons would just be useless. Right? And also, and also in a way, a little bit of a sink because of the cost to do Bane as well in that regard. All right, awesome. There you go. But then. it won't be locked behind Richard Mojo. Got it. Uh, and Tier 90. Uh, is Elder Rune. Elder Rune. Also okay. a controversy, but this is entirely about the name. A lot of people just don't like the name. Okay, go for it. Because it's kind of simple. It's just too basic. Elder Rune. It's just Rune with the word Elder stuck on the front <laughs> to make it sound better, right? And that's a legitimate criticism. Yeah, that's fair. But the, it, it raises an interesting point about development that we have we have to sort of think about um, the mining and surfing rework is not primarily a lore update. What was the name before? Uh, Ethereum. Ethereum, so with an A, I presume. Uh, Ethereum. Yeah, Ethereum, yeah. Right. Um, with, with the Mining and Smithing Rework is primarily an economic skilling update. Yep. So comprehensibility is important. The ability to just search for things on the GE is important. The fancy sounding law names are less important for this content. In something like a quest, and every, every, like with me and Stu, I think if you've played any of our content, you will know that we are not ashamed of sticking massive Latin words in that no one understands, including any of the developers, and, and, and we're not worried about doing that. But when we're talking about the new highest tier metal in the game, the primary training method that will get you from 90 to 200 million, it needs to be simple, straightforward. So the fact that the best kind of log is an Elder Log and the best kind of metal is Elder Rune is a good thing from a usability point of view, so, even if it's a bit boring from a lore point of view. Okay, that's fair. So, uh, so, was, that it? so was that in consideration? And now, we have, obviously, we have like Elder Logs. It kind of makes sense because that's the highest tier for woodcutting. Yeah, Merging. it's not. It's okay. not exactly an intentional strategy, but it ties into the, the sort of that's concept fair. of the game. And, and I agree completely that the law, that as as a word, it's just not that interesting. But that's not the first. That's not the most important consideration. Awesome. All right. So I think um, we're going to come over to more clumsy in a moment because he is going to show you um, some awesome modeling. You guys are going to enjoy this. So uh, let's come over to more clumsy now. Cool. So. Yeah, I thought I would start with showing off the Oracle Com stuff I did already. Uh, so you guys get an idea of how I usually work. So basically, um, we get the concepts from the concept artists. So these ones were made by Mod Nice Pants. Uh, and these are really good because they're all like, f they're, they don't have perspective, they're just f flat. And these are really easy to model on top of. Uh, so here you can see like, the Oricalcum shield and basically we always start with an eye poly sculpt and once we're done with these um, we move to the low poly the way I usually work for runescape is I always like to load up the base player character and some reference some size references like existing in-game shields to get a sense of scale whenever I start sculpting uh, once I'm done with this, I move to the low poly, which I'm not going to show now. I usually do the lo my low poly meshes in Maya, but Maya is not, it's quite boring software to look at. Um, so these are like the, the in-game models. They're quite low poly. I just realized you can't even see my face because of the camera position. So when I'm standing <laughs> up, it's like a disembodied head. Fine, we just want to see your you. I, I, quite, I quite like to. You, you quite like it like that, Shed. I thought you would. <laughs> uh, I thought you would. Bernie, they're, just, Bernie, they're asking cool. about who you are. Can you tell them some recent content? Yeah, well, what content have you worked on, Clancy? Oh, um, we haven't oh. really had a chance to talk about that. So, yeah, I joined Jagex like a year ago. Um, I've worked, I think the first team I worked for was the Eternals. I worked on one of the expansions. Nice. Um, my first update, I think it was Invention Batch 2. Oh, so you're a part of Machines and everything yeah, like that? Yeah, I did, I did awesome. a Diplomatic. <laughs> a Diplomatic, yes. Yeah. A Diplomatic, yeah. And after that, I work, worked on Pirate Quest. I did Barrel Chest, Migor, uh, Rabbit Check. Um, so all of the graphical updates for those models? Yeah, all the graphical nice. updates for those. I worked on Solak and Marathel. 
hype for the end of the month, people. Yeah. Oh man, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, Hopefully. there was like, uh, yeah, I'm really thankful for all the feedback I got from players on on Marathel. Really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, now I'm working on mining and smithing. I also helped in another quest. Uh, I think I helped in you are eat and I don't know. There are always like little jobs we. Been need. busy to say the very least. So yeah, been all the very busy. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So back to this stuff. Um, yeah. Once we're done with the low poly, we move to 3D code, which is basically what we. Uh, no. Yeah. There's someone asking about Z modeler. These are not made with Z modeler. These are all made in Maya with Quad Draw tool. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you saw the accent bit, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so once we're done with the low poly, we move into Treat Code. Treat Code is like it's the best software to texture. I really love it because it's very similar to Photoshop, but it works with 3D models. Um, so whenever when we when we start here, we always start with an ambient occlusion map, which is basically it's generated by the software and it calculates all the contact shadows nice, between like between every piece of geometry so this really helps like setting up the the base uh, our base textures it's a really nice base to start painting from so it's like it's essentially coming up the blueprint for your item yeah, 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 yeah. Going? yeah okay. exactly once we're done with the eminent occlusion I start raining the metals so for oricalcum because it's because it's red and that don't don't really paint red metals ever, uh, especially these ones because they have like this kind of orange and yellow highlights. So I thought it was easier for me to start painting with like a more proper like real metal instead of going crazy with these purples yep. and reds and all that, which is really tricky to start with. So yeah, basically I just started rendering like normal metals. Um, then you had like some base colors, um, more values. So you can see how you're taking layer by layer, basically. Yeah, I kind of stop. Uh, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So this is this is like the middle ground. I'm gonna I'm gonna load the final one. It's probably gonna take a bit to to open, but yeah, but yeah, that's pretty much. It. So today I'm gonna be starting. I'm gonna start sculpting the, the wow the necronium. Holy oh jeez. Um, uh, watch my PG filter there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> close. Um, damn. Yeah. So awesome. this is like the final the final pass of texturing. Okay. It, I didn't do much between the final one I showed uh, on the previous file and this one. This is just like a layer with a color dodge, just like going crazy with highlights and making it look a bit more like metal. We've uh, we've managed to load them into game now. Oh yeah, they're all in game, and, uh, and they actually yeah. do look like that in game. Yeah, they, they this do. Isn't, this isn't like a special, so, super good-looking version. Damn. I, I, okay, that's awesome. <laughs> like, we'll get we'll get in-game screenshots out as soon as we can. Yeah, 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 reliably. yeah. Regarding like someone asked about consistency like uh, minutes ago. One thing we're trying to do with this project is having me like throughout the whole project. Because one thing happens sometimes when there's like two modelers working on the same project, we get like a bit of different style. Uh, so we're looking for like a unified. So style. we're like we're like trying to have me working on this till the till the end of the project. It's gonna be insane. I'm gonna do so so many so many different armor sets and. <laughs> Uh, this yeah. is now you for the rest of the year, right? Yeah. Basically, yeah. This basically, is now your life. this is my life now. <laughs> Goodbye NPCs. And <laughs> <laughs> but but it's actually it's actually been a lot of fun, and and the team has been talking a lot, which is good. Uh, we talk a lot between concept artists and yeah. and modelers uh, to have their. We give them our feedback. They give us our give us our feedback on the texturing and on the modeling. It's actually pretty good. Mm. Um, the pickaxe looks absolutely amazing. Oh, yeah. I love that. That's so cool. Wow, eh? It's a good way to get consistency as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, you, if you get final sign off on something, then it, it sh you know, it should look. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. So. I feel, I, I feel like from an important, it's very important to mention, like you kind of mentioned it, but having like that one modeler all the way through, making sure it's that same style all the yeah, way, yeah, will yeah. make it a lot better than eight percent of it is done yeah. by you, for example. Yeah. Then someone else has their style, and you can clearly tell the difference. Yeah, so yeah, I think exactly. it's really yeah. Awesome. We're trying. I think we're trying to do that more and more. I think. With Pirate Finale, we did the same. I worked on part the whole throughout the whole Pirate Finale. I think Mod Dame will help with the horrors or something like that. Yep. But 
all the other NPCs that were reworked, uh, they were all reworked for, uh, by me. Um, and this is out uh, just to clarify again. This is how they look in game right now. It's just uh, yeah. These are the these chat. are the the low res textures and the low poly meshes. This is all like that went in game. Um, awesome. And yep. So I'm gonna move to ZBrush now. Probably start sculpting the Necronium shield, which is like the first stage of the of the of the whole project. Um, so let me see what I have here. Uh, okay. So I have the. Um, <laughs> These, I have the Oricalcum shield here as a size reference. And one thing we really want to do with these shields and weapons, we really want to make them look badass. And Hell yes. Big means, I think badass means big. Badass is a, a perfect <laughs> word for this, I think. So yes. So, okay. So I have the Oricalcum. I also have this guy here, which is quite helpful as well. These are in existing in-game shields. Um... And I have a skull that I'm gonna use as a base. I also have the concept up here. Let me get rid of this. Cool. Yeah, it's edgy looking. Someone. <laughs> it's edgy looking. It, yeah, that's that's normal. I, and I'm also making it look a bit more edgy so I can actually see the, my, my brush strokes better and all yep. that. So the way I worked in ZBrush, I always start with primitives. So in this case, I'm just gonna load uh, like a sphere. That's basically there's there's not like there's no real magic in ZBrush. You just work it like clay. The magic is speed. What in God? I'm just like I'm mesmerized by the speed of it. I think it's mental, honestly, Sorry. incredible. <laughs> no, don't slow down by all means. I just think it's okay, crazy cool. how you just. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? Okay, so yeah, one thing when I first saw like this concept that Neil made, I was completely blown away. And when we spoke about the the live stream, I thought it was. A pretty good, a pretty good concept to sculpt life. Uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so gonna mess this. Gonna add a bit of curvature here. So um, I guess I'll let you crack on and answer a few questions just to yeah, see yeah, how you sure. do that. So, um, small Jack, Mod Stu, come to you guys. Um, just clarify, Oracalcum, what tier is that? Just for everyone on stream who's getting that's, a reminder. That's sixty. Tier sixty. Yeah. So this is same tier as, sixty. It'll be same as Dragon. Um, we may have to buff Dragon. We're not sure at this point. Because as it is at the moment, because Oracalcum can be upgraded and Dragon can't, the Oracalcum's going to end up better. Now, it kind of doesn't matter because Dragon's been redundant for a long time. Like, Dragon only really exists for sort of prestige and nostalgia. It doesn't actually have much of a useful in-game function anymore. Um, so we probably don't need to buff it, but we might do. On the, on the app, there's also not much reason not to, so we might buff Dragon slightly. But it's still, I mean, it, Bandos will still just be better, so it doesn't really matter. What's next for you guys? Like, if we were to say, let's say you guys were back on stream next week, what would you be looking to do in the next week? Uh, that's a good question, actually. Uh, there's a lot of balancing still to do. Um, we have to sort out... The, 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 the next biggest unanswered question is um, the overload. Um, I am... I am do, the, the over, the, so this is a smith. This is a, an untradeable benefit for having a high smithing level. Um, this is a complicated piece of design because it, it so tightly affects combat. It's intimately tied into combat balancing. Whatever it is that we do becomes def assumed as a default thing that high-level players can do and therefore has to be factored into all future boss design and balancing. So it's actually a much more complicated... It, it's very, very simple to write a simple design and it's actually quite easy to implement as well. But the, the impact of it on the game is going to be so large that it requires just continual discussion with all of the combat developers. So in a nutshell, what is the overload? Like, what is What are you looking to do with that overload? Do you kind I'm, of I'm aiming for it to be as simple as possible. Okay. So for a, a, as an example of a simple design, and I'm not saying this is what it's going to do because this is problematic from a balancing point of view. I just want it to be a straight damage bonus because that's simple to understand. It's simple to appreciate the benefit of. The problem, of course, is that just if it, say, increases your damage by 20%, which is a ridiculously high number, but for sake of argument, that just means all boss kills are now 20% faster, yeah. which means all loot acquired through combat is now acquired 20% faster. I mean, it's slight oversimplification, but, but the maths is essentially that. So obviously introducing a massive DPS bonus for all players um, has a huge, huge impact on the economy and the balancing of the game. So it's not as simple as, let's just give players a damage boost. So um, someone said, why make a skill in fin effect combat? 
So why make a skilling reward in essence from skilling effectively? Uh, part, I mean, the simple version of the answer is, is, is we asked players about that a few years ago and that was the answer we got. Uh, having it affect skilling is complicated because skilling at the moment with the design of most of the skills, mostly all we, there, there are two ways to make a skilling update, so a, a reward for a skill. One is it just gives an XP bonus. The other is it, it, it does something that's complicated and intricately involved with that skill. So it picks some mechanic from that skill and, and interacts with it in a complicated way, which is typically very difficult to balance, prone to bugs and breaking, messes up the skill next time someone else wants to change a skill. You can see a lot of that in the kind of things that we've done. That's, that's where all the, the, the rewards that become redundant come from. There's a lot of that going on with the mining and smithing rework. Um, so actually affecting skills without just giving them straight XP bonuses is, is, is very... The, the effort to reward is not really there, if that makes sense, because yep. ultimately all that means in practice is you end up getting faster XP. Um, I'll, answer, I'll ask you one more question, but um, just for people who, who are watching the stream now going, has this just died? Um, not to be the bearer of bad news, this is, we started an hour ago, uh, <laughs> this is a two hour stream, um, so we're planning to go all the way up to 5pm game time or 6pm here in the UK, could go a little longer depending, but because we did start ten minute, almost 10 minutes late. Um, coming back to you, um, why not, uh, sorry, we're clumsy, and one more, and then we'll come back to you clumsy. Um, why not a defensive bonus for this overload? Uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's one of the options. The problem, of course, you can see from the comparison of power armor and tank armor in the game is that defensive bonuses simply aren't as useful. A okay. defensive bonus would have to be extremely strong, like, you know, halve your food consumption or something in order for it to be worth the bother. Like, a, a, a players, and it's not players' fault, it's because of the way that the combat in the game works. Typically, you do very low risk... You know, if, if you're doing something risky that's likely to result in you dying, that's not what you're doing for profit. So defensive bonuses have to be very strong to tip the bone, to, you know, tip, tip the balance from it's a dangerous encounter to it's not a dangerous encounter. Or from, you know, obviously there's tanks in, in, in group activities and stuff, but that's a very, very niche piece of content. So we can see from the way that power armor is used that, that damage bonuses are what players actually respond well to, if you see what I mean. Stu, what are you up to in the next week or so? So if we were to come back next Tuesday and we had another stream, what would you have worked on in that time? Uh, well, um, hopefully uh, I'm on the um, final iteration of the uh, mining site design because that's gone through a few iterations over several weeks and I need to get on getting a lot more actual implementation done. So get the, um, that implemented, I hope, get all the mining sites replaced in-game, in deal with all the corner cases that will create uh, where you in, need to interact with mining sites for, for tasks, for certain quests, like uh, what, what's mine is yours, it requires you to have certain sites in certain places, um, where that impacts um, mining sites that are unlocked by quests and trying to keep them somewhat relevant, um, dealing with potential challenges related to that. Uh, so once I've resolved that, then moving on to the next things on the list, I believe the next thing I was going to look at was probably tools and things on the tool belt. Yes, um, tool belt. But, yeah. Um, we'll the, tool, the tool belt's a huge problem because, as they're currently designed, you can't take things off the tool belt. But, of course, because you can now upgrade them, you need to be able to take them off in order to upgrade them, so we're going to have to figure out what that yeah. means. And I had to do some very convoluted um, well, workarounds to that for crystal um, equipment yeah. and drink we thinness. So. kind of allow you to take it off with invention. Yeah, that as well. So we've, we've progressively added complicated workarounds to that rule at a time so it's, probably it's, be from a technical point of view it's not a, it's not fun i can imagine although there is a precedent it's not a technical precedent agreed exactly. um yeah. i think it's safe to say the tool tool belt update we had recently might help a little bit in that regard yeah especially that, for you guys yeah that's that's uh, simplified the code of the tool belt significantly so um if it's viable for us to make it a standard feature to remove tools under that framework it's probably going to wind up being the simpler option and then we can rip out a lot of those um, workarounds that we did previously to try and keep that rule in place. Awesome. Right. Clumsy, going to come back to you. Someone said this is like watching a speed run. And when I look at it now, the progress really? made is oh. pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. This is awesome. So, what yeah, have you done so far? What I've done so far, I'm just trying to block out the shapes. I've used um, a skull that is that comes integrated with ZBrush. It's under tools. You can grab, like, there's a skeleton here for those who we're interested about that. Um, it's, it's always good to try to reuse stuff as much as possible to speed up your workflow. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to block the mesh. Um, I'm going to create some geometry here to make it look a bit more smooth. 
Uh, yeah, this this shield is actually good sculpting ZBrush because it's very organic. So I think it's gonna it's gonna look yeah it's gonna it's gonna look good in the end. Um, cool. So I kind of asked my Neil this earlier, but in like you know without obviously being on stream and a camera on you and so on. Yeah, yeah. When it comes to like an average model, how long are you talking here? Oh, uh, it really it really depends on the complexity. Like I think for the Orichalcum weapons. Those were quite fast. The models, were, the the concepts were simple and easy to read. I think those took me like two weeks or something to do. Okay. But that as was in, as a set. That is. As a set, yeah. yeah the, all the, the all weapons and, and shields, yeah. Um, not sure about I was gonna work out for the rest of the stuff, but like for characters, I think Marathel, an example, it took me probably between three to four weeks or something like that. Because mm -hmm. uh, we always have to, always have to QA stuff as well. Uh, and even though we're sometimes we can be quite fast with the model, we, there's a lot of stuff we need to to get ready before we put the, the model in game, and that ends up like taking us like a day or two. So instead of using ZBrush, uh, just to clarify the the software you're using, this yeah, is yeah, ZBrush, right? this is ZBrush, yeah. yeah. And uh, it may look easy, but I'll tell you what, uh, <laughs> this is incredible to just watch. It's awesome. Yeah, this is the first time I'm sculpting live. So, how, you, how, you, how you doing? How you feeling about it? Nervous. Don't need to be. You're smashing it. Absolutely smashing it. This is I awesome. Would, I would not want someone watching me while I was writing a design document. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just be typing a sentence and then typo and delete it. And yeah, that's, that's kind of how I'm feeling. Can we do that as a stream next time, please? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, Jack's live design documents. <laughs> but yeah, let us know in the chat, guys, what you think of this so far. You know, let uh, Clumsy and Neil know how they're doing. And I'm, I'm, I'm imagining a lot of awesome comments going to come your way. So uh, keep an eye out for that one. Yeah. Uh, I think people love uh, and appreciate this stuff. And I'll tell you what, I just love watching like just our creation processes. I think it's amazing. Yeah, there you go. All the lovely comments. Uh -huh. Awesome. Thanks, guys. <laughs> there you go. I have no idea what he's doing, but it looks rad. <laughs> <laughs> Which is completely fair, I guess. If you know, if you're just watching someone and you're pretty not pretty good summer, isn't it? And you're not aware of the model process. It's like, well, why is the camera moving so much? Why is everything going here and there? Yeah, I, I know. Sorry, guys. You uh, don't, I think <laughs> for, for me, it's like I'm, I'm really used and I move the camera really fast. You but work how you work. But like, every uh, time I'm showing it to someone, they go like, I'm getting sick, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got that feedback from making videos. It's like, do you have to zoom in and out? Like, I yeah, feel like yeah, it well. really shows like the kind of like in my opinion, streams like this, I feel like they need to mimic or replicate, you know, the normal yeah, working work, day. And yeah, I think yeah. that, I think this is like the best way of doing it, and that is just you doing you in your natural yeah. form. So I think it's just awesome just seeing So it like the, that. the way I'm doing this in ZBrush, like so game art usually you you just need a low poly in the end of the day. I could either just model these directly in Maya and come up with a low poly, or I can start in ZBrush and then generate the low poly out of these and use this high poly as a reference for the low poly, yep. which is what I'm doing now because it's a very organic shape. I can really like use these details in my low poly texturing. Like I can literally grab this view and bake this into my um, low poly texture, which is amazing. So basically, I just get, oh, wow. I just get all this detail that you're seeing here in my in my texture to start painting. Awesome. Um, yeah, so just to clarify, he's working off the image to the left, so obviously for the people watching the stream, uh, just below the camera in the top, uh, yeah, the top this left. Yeah, I'll, this put, it, I'll put it probably. That's fine. Where it was, it was fine. Um, or even that works. Uh, but yeah, that is essentially what uh, Clumsy is trying to replicate in a model. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite hard sometimes. It takes some time to nail down the proportions. It's the most difficult part. Uh, yeah, I can imagine, like, um, you know, uh, but this is where I assume when you get near finishing, you can uh, refine stuff. Yeah, that, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes we start completely off, like, off scale and off pro without nailing any of the proportions, but then we just, like, the cool thing is that you can just come here anytime, grab the move brush and go like, oh, maybe this guy should be more like this or like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, clip that someone please, that's brilliant. Oh my goodness. Um, someone said if you were to stream this on your own channel, they'd watch, which is pretty awesome. Oh, that's cool. Thanks. Um, Oh man, I feel like the skull will look much better than the model. Um, I mean, that's I mean, the skull is definitely like your <laughs> yeah. That's that's like that the sense. focal point, yeah. Um, so yeah, I can kind of see that. Uh, yeah, just so cool. Yeah, I still need like some. It needs to look more stylized than these, so that's what I'm gonna try next. So um, someone said, "How long have you been using ZBrush for?" Oh, long time. Oh, there uh, we go. 
I think I probably four years, something like that. But you, you can you can get good at ZBrush in, in a year or so. You don't. I mean, the the, the thing about three D or three D career is that it's not just about ZBrush. It's about like every tool. You need to to learn how to use a lot a bunch of softwares. Yeah. Like ZBrush, three D Code, Maya, Max. Uh, so I don't know, like <laughs> everything, <laughs> everything, a Photoshop. It, it's a lot. Of, it, it's a lot of tools. ZBrush was the first three D tool I actually learned how to use because uh, it's it's the most it's the funniest one to use because it, you, you're actually sculpting live on the software, while the other programs they just they're just you just use your mouse to model. That's quite boring. And again, just to clarify, the concept is essentially kind of like the inspiration, but then the real refinement of it comes from the model you're making, right? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. yeah. But we, we, we can go crazy with it without asking the concept artists if they're okay with a couple changes or yeah. stuff like that. Man, so cool. I tell you, I, I, I'm, I always will reiterate art streams are the way for, are the way for me. I absolutely love stuff like this. Like, um, oh, cool. I always love it, the inspiration of like Mod Ghost with old school streams. I've absolutely yeah, loved yeah, watching yeah. that stuff. And I, we did it once in 2016, and that was with um, former Mod Stuo when he designed this, uh, did yeah. the animations for Twin Furies. Oh, I see. Um, and we didn't really have anything in 2017. We had an art stream, but we didn't have like live showcases. Yeah, and yeah. now we're in 2018. We've had three already, and I'm like, this is just so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, it's so awesome! Uh, the guys on the couch look so awestruck. Yeah, <laughs> which is I'm awestruck by the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I love these passionate players. Oh, that's awesome! So, um, I mean, from this perspective, I mean, what um, what have you got um, left to design uh, to model in this sense? Then, uh, very open-ended question. I understand that. Yeah, a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, so, I'm just trying to get the skull to look good. Yep. Like I. I... Uh, yeah, I just want it to look good, as I imagine. Shall uh, we go back to Mod Neil and we'll see how yeah, you are sure. in a little bit? All right, awesome. Let us come over to Mod Neil, uh, who yeah. I believe is now on stream. Hello, sir. Hello. I'm, just I'm, a, I'm back on stream. Yes. I think my, my hands are on stream. I'm not sure. If oh, I'm the hand camera's on. Yeah, hand it is. Hand camera's on. Hand camera's just, just hands. I'm just going to move this here for you. There you there go. go. I'm, I'm the hand, hand camera is there. Yeah, so you can see the screen. I've, I've drawn, I've got kind of like these four. Oh, wow. So I've got these um, unlit. They're like they have to have the fire in them. Um, whether they have a door or not, I haven't really decided. But you know, you'd, you'd have to do a drawing with them, with the door, with the door off, with the fire. If it had like special f fire to go inside it, I don't know if uh, Tim wants to talk about that. Anything you want to? Uh, in, uh, in, in regards to the what? Sorry, the, the, the fire. The, the type of flames. The type gonna... of flames. Oh yeah, we've got yeah. A, we've got a mechanic we're hoping to implement um, for the Outsounds workshop where. Yeah. You, you can bring along a device called an Illuminite Injector and, and buff the whole Artisans Workshop for everyone on that world for like 10 minutes or five minutes or something. Yeah. So then the idea would be that the flames would change color in order to demonstrate that's happening. You know, those pipes that go under the ground would keep yeah. those and have them. So kind of like what's being highlighted now then? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. I should have yeah. used the better color, uh, but yeah, kind of from there to there. And then the, the flame will be um, maybe blue, maybe, you know, a, a kind of powered up kind of version of, of, of that. So. These these could have like some cool um, effect in them to show that they powered up. So so if I was to paint, um, let's give it another layer, and you're going to paint say a flame. So it's going to have some kind of flame. Yeah. Um, and you can kind of cheat because you can use um, the what's it called. So these are full of fire, and then you know if 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 I did that in a slightly better job of that, and then they could I can just see what it would look like with any kind of color, because I can just kind of slide through and just say like, oh, blue looks really nice, or purple, or yeah. or whatever. I mean, blue probably would look the best because it's kind of got that super hot quality of light about it. So you're gonna, and then you you say, all right, blue's cool. I'm gonna go for blue. Let's give it like an insane kind of blue flame down the bottom. Push it to white. And then you'd get a kind of glowing, and then you'd paint in like all the, you know, the, the, the blue as it always up light, the kind of overhang parts of the forge and brighten it all up. And you'd have a cool looking, like all the light would spill out and hit the steps and stuff. And do a better job than so that. So good, that, no, regardless. Rough, you know, if, if you kind of kept working on, at that, you could kind of get the, the feel of a, of a lit version of the forges. And Fi I could put, firelighters, Mojack? 
Yeah, there you go. <laughs> make the fire lighters happen. We've got them in game already, so uh, yeah, we can totally make that happen. That'd be awesome, just so to just, oh. the stuff like that. Just, no, like, what, to have them change the colour of the forges? No, that'd be really confusing, because then you wouldn't know whether the buff was on. Well, only for the player only. Oh. So then, you know... Sure, if she wants to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, I wouldn't have to do the work, so I can agree to anything. Just, yeah, say, uh, just say yes. I'd better, probably, better, probably better say no in that case. Yeah, that, that's completely yeah. fair. Um, man, yeah. this is... So obviously, um, before we left you, um, we hadn't looked... We, yeah, we, there was a lot less, obviously, colour in regards to the content and everything else, but now it's really picked up since then. I'm trying so, to like light it so you can... For, for myself, really, to just like see like what... Which one I like, you know, for like the kind of like more octagonal kind of doorway or this kind of Boba Fett. Yeah, I like this one because it's <laughs> it's like a, a nail shape, and you've got an area where you could walk up to and and smith on, and then yeah. kind of walk back down the steps, and then you could kind of get to an anvil. Um, I quite like that, um, and then I like this kind of like detail panel, but then it's got a kind of panel that you could. Uh, I do, you know, like put extra coal in, or like let let the heat out, or do some kind of, like, you know, like some kind of bellows or some kind of unexplained, because um, you know, you end up watching strange YouTube videos on uh, on people on the forging samurai swords and and like the strange bits they use and the cool um, bellows that go underground and then they kind of pump that and then that gets the the flame really hot. So imagine if you saw went to a different civilization and they had like a forge, it wouldn't just be. You know, it wouldn't just be a copy of a forge. You you would know as human. It'd have elements that you could recognise, but bits would be different. And it's just kind of like trying to put in a few little like detail notes so people go like, oh yeah, that that might be for that, or that might be where you can take a panel off with like a long iron rod and just like you know, let let the flame cool down or or let let bits heat up. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of like just zooming out and zooming in and so, just kind of going. Someone uh, mentioned that they love how passionate you are about this. That makes it amazing to watch, which is awesome. People seeing the passion well, this, uh, coming out. Yeah, you got. I think you got a passion for it because you got to like you got to really go like, oh, what is it? You know, what is it? What is a dwarf doing? What, why would they make this? I mean, maybe you have got the, the inlaid metalwork. They're kind of showing off that they've mastered um, stone masonry and metalwork uh, in a way. You know that. The other races probably, probably wouldn't so much. The elves are kind of singing crystal to life, but the dwarves have definitely mastered the metal work. And because uh, you wouldn't, you wouldn't really inlay stone with metal and then go to that much trouble to do it more than a few times. So it's got that, got that vibe to it. If like you could put decoration inside decoration and mm. kind of get away with it, because it's like, yeah, that's fine. I I believe that they would do that. You see it in. Um, What's that film? Oh, the, no, The Hobbit. Yeah. Yeah. They've they've got kind of very bold shapes and uh, I wonder. I think Runescape was first. I'm not sure this one. Like art yeah. is a whole new, like the yeah. variance of creation it's, of art and stuff. It's all new like, for me. It's not. It's not a, a mystery that that this the same in like other things because because it boils down to say if you bring up a dwarf and it's the proportion, so it's like kind of like. Most things, you know, they'd fit in in a kind of more square shape, whereas like a human would fit in a in something that's like kind of four times as tall as it is high. So like a lot of the the proportions and shape divides suit this little square. So you think like, oh, 45 degree angle suits them really well, and, and these like shallow angles. I think just casually drawn a 45 degree. What? I could never um, do that. What the hell? But Mental. Like, yeah, we, we can see it like repeating in all these buildings and things and and, and metalwork, and these ones are quite. You're kind of abstract, but they've they've got a cool quality to them because they're all using the same shapes over and over again. It's a big chimney stack here, yeah. and metalwork. Um, yeah, it's it's elaborate, but it's also quite heavy and grounded. So, yeah, for dwarves, uh, this is for a human, but it's like built by dwarves, so it should look like it's been built by dwarves. End the stream. We're in school. Well, first of all, one, you should probably be uh, f focusing on your school, but having this in the background. So just listen and learn. Yeah, the teachers both play it. Oh, yeah, yeah, show everybody how to draw. Week, isn't it? In the uh, UK. The number uh, zero percent of my coursework because of the stream. Um, well, I'd love to say we're bad influences, but you're very welcome in that regard. I got a shout out to Scarlett. who should be revising for GCSEs tonight. She's out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if she's watching. Oops, show the clip now. Kids, show yeah. the show the specific I, oh, section exactly. on the, on the stream where you've literally yeah. just given a call out. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. Revised chemistry. 
Yeah, it's all GCSE this week, isn't it? And then it's coming up to... Um... Yeah, it's all uh, finals and everything else. Yeah, yeah. Someone said, uh, that, uh, well, this is referring to me, doesn't it? The Holden ship or Jordan Light makes going straight lines. No, it didn't. This is why I'm a noob with this stuff, as you can imagine. So I get oh, right. excited yeah, over yeah, the you little can, things. You can draw, you can, yeah, you can draw using the shift key, which is which is handy for long straight lines. I told yeah. you, like, this is this is why I'm a noob. Yeah. I just react yeah. to everything because it's just all new to me, and I think it's awesome. But, yeah. yes. Yes, you, I think, yeah, you, you, it's great for like using the eraser tool. But yeah, if you can draw as much stuff freehand as you can, why not? Because yeah. it's all good practice. And then I'm, I'm basically I'm just putting little fancy details in things now, because um, I'm happy with it. Once you're happy with the design, you know I'd be pretty, because I like to do a bit of 3D modeling as well. I'd I'd, I'd be happy to, to take these um, shapes and basically turn them into 3D models, and then just have a little spin around, and then you have a talk with um, Luke and stuff, and, and just say like, should we ever? Should we, you know, should, do you fancy this, or do you think this, should, this will work in the area, and then it will kind of get a thumbs uh, up? Or a, you're now known as Mod Hands. Here we Mod see hands. Mod Hands Designer Forge and Stream. Uh, so someone Super Hands. <laughs> if anyone watches uh, that program, do you want me? Oh man, I'm not that that guy. I would watch these art streams even if they were, were more informal. Just whatever the concept art is working on with nice background music, don't always need the formal hosting, Q&A, dialogue, etc. See, the problem is oh, for streams right. like well. this is like from a production perspective to try and set up the art person's PC and everything else, it does take time. It's not just as simple as we can put them on a PC and they have everything because they have their custom brushes, their custom yeah, layouts do. and everything else. Yeah. So it's a little bit complicated in that regard. Yeah, you couldn't have a PC for... I mean, literally, just for my example... Um, <laughs> I, like this computer uh, and thing, everything is different to someone else's Photoshop. I've, yep. I've put all my shortcut keys in myself. Yeah, you know, so obviously I, this is customised for you. Cause yeah, it's for me. I, I mean, I, I'm pressing buttons that, you know, if someone else was pressing, it wouldn't it wouldn't work. Like even zooming in now is different on my yeah. own. And brush scale and stuff is different. Um, so someone said uh, yeah. nice shadow and details, looking more three D now. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to put in um, pushback shapes and, um, you know, at this stage, because I've been doing more 3D stuff, I, I would be happy to take that into 3D and just kind of make a model to get the proportions and then you could even drop a model in the game. You know, that for me, this this stage is like, I'm, I'd be happy with, with that level of rendering. You could, But you can always do more. You can always kind of go like, you know, you can always chamfer edges and, and, and put in light and say okay i want this to be lit by like a cyan light or a green light or mm. i want it to be um you know i want this side of the model to be hit by a red light and that one and it would look even prettier but it's kind of like you've got to realize that this is not going to be the end thing the end thing is handed over and it's kind of it'd be it, you know for concept art it, it needs to be kind of like cool but you don't have to render it's not an illustration mm. you've got to be able to kind of like lasso things and just press delete and just kind of not be bothered about it because it you will you will be uh throwing lots of stuff away and lots of stuff won't won't get made because it's much easier to draw something than it is to go through the whole pipeline get modeled and then labeled and animated and by the time it goes through to qa you know, it's, a, it's a lot of it's a lot of work so you know it's good that we can we can draw stuff and just get rid of it uh john um, this is a question for you do we get two twitch crates due to the stream being double length <laughs> Sorry? It's your decision. Mate. It's no, my no. decision. Oh boy. Um, well, everyone's going to say yes, do it, do it, do it, do it. Um, do it. It's two, it's two hours. You've got modeling and concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to say it's, one, it's one crate for fair. modeling, one crate for concept. I'm, all right, we're doing it. There you go. We're making two nice. crates. There you go, everyone. Can we get five tomorrow? Well. <laughs> <laughs> no, please. It'll don't have say been that. worth it to yeah. give the people what they want. There yeah. we give, go. Give the people what they want. That's the we key. should be fine. Yeah, we'll, yeah. Um, we'll make sure that you guys get um, two crates at the end of this. There you go. Based on the chat, we're ruining a lot of people's days. Yeah, they're also, it's great. They're all so distracted. They're just killing themselves and not having, not having showers. Genuinely, I've, I've, never, I've never seen yes, a stream yes. where we've ruined so much productivity. <laughs> yeah. It's actually great. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say just more like this then, please. Yeah, more stuff like this. Okay. Oh man! Um, so, some say we're gonna get, get uh, gonna ugh, going to be getting the keys from the quest anytime soon. Um, if you log out, log back in, you will have uh, your keys. So, if you didn't get it initially, we hot fixed this. So, if you log out, log back in, and you have done the quest, you will now get the keys. So, uh, make sure to do that. What am I doing now? Meant to be revising biology, bad influences. Sorry, who said that? So, it's just, that? I did see oh, it. Someone, uh, yeah, someone said it, that so quick. that could be related. All right. <laughs> 
Shall I do some questions? Uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's pop some questions, yeah. Jack. Go for it. Um, someone asked, um, is this, are we going to be able to see this armoring game in the beta? Uh, I wouldn't have committed to that, but based on the rate that Mod Clumsy is going through it, <laughs> the answer is <laughs> probably. Like, we're, we're, we'll certainly put whatever is modelled at the point when the beta comes out, we'll yeah, put the yeah, armoring yeah. game. Yeah. I would expect by that point it's probably most of it, but I wouldn't promise that it would be all of it. Um, it, are mining and smithing going to 120? No. Was that, that ever make... discussed? Uh, we talked about it on previous streams. It doesn't make sense to take them to 120 at this point because um, uh, combat doesn't go to 120. So one, like logically, 110 smithing would make 110 combat gear, and there isn't any. There can't be 110 combat gear because there isn't 110 attack and defense. Um, so it sort of doesn't really make sense at this point. It would have to do something different. Um, Someone, someone said uh, they're looking for an excuse to remove harmed rune, which is interesting because by default, if we don't do anything, harmed rune will just be useless because uh, it, as of the rework, runeite doesn't run out when you mine it. So the benefit of harmed rune is fairly small. Also, runeite is being nerfed to level 50. So if we just left trial hour as it is, it would be a bit rubbish. So actually, we're going to have to go in and, and add something new. Nice. So it's not that we're trying to find an excuse not to, to remove it, but that by default it's going to get ruined, so we're going to have to try and put something new in to, to benefit it. Uh, we're not 100% sure what at the moment. Uh, uh, some people asked what's happening to the crystal pick. Um, the new pickaxes, so there will be new tiers of pickaxe, so for example an Elder Rune pickaxe will be quite good. I think by default it is better than the crystal pickaxe. But what we're going to do is add in an upgraded crystal pickaxe that requires the crystal pickaxe to make, and that way new players will still have to get their crystal pickaxe and existing players who've already got the crystal pickaxe will be one step along on acquiring the best pickaxe in the game, which is what the upgraded crystal will be. So that's our plan for how to retain the value of the crystal, even though there'll be a, a smithable alternative that's better. What about rune alkin? A prices for alks for rune? We're still doing the balancing on that. They're probably going to have to come down. My expectation is something like rune items will have their alk values reduced. But in the smithing rework, you can upgrade items to higher tiers by combining them with more material. So you get, say, a rune plate body and combine it with another five rune bars, and that makes a rune plate body plus one. Probably the rune plate body plus one, because it contains twice as much material, will have an ALK value closer to the value of an existing rune plate body. So my hope is, if all the numbers work out correctly when we've got the final balancing, that what we can do on launch is take people's existing rune plate bodies and just swap them out for rune plate bodies plus one, and now they've got they've retained the same ALK value. Wow, okay. That's what I'm hoping we'll be able to do. That's roughly the plan. And we're going to do similar things to just make sure people don't lose. Because what we absolutely do not want is when the rework launches, players log in, and either they've got a massive windfall of huge new value in their bank. We don't want that happening. Because then that makes all the players who didn't hoard the right kind of item feel bad. And we don't want people logging in and the contents of their bank is now worthless. We don't want either of those two to happen. So we're going to try to substitute items for other items or, or affect the value of items in order to prevent that from happening. We kind of talked about this back at the first content showcase we did in November, Spring Cleaner. What are you guys doing for Spring Cleaner? So we've put the design out for that now. Um, Spring Cleaner will... So we, we're going to replet on drop tables. We're going to take smithable items off drop tables, so no more rune longswords. Okay. Um, we're going to replace them with a salvage item that has the same um, has the same ALK value and has the same components, roughly. There's a full design if you want to go look at it. Um, but it has roughly the same ALK and the same component drop table. Um, and that will be used to replace the existing smithable drops. And then the, the spring cleaner will auto-ALK those items for you or auto-disassemble those items for you. Okay. So... It, in practice, despite all that, it will be a bit of a nerf to the spring cleaner. Mm -hmm. At the moment, the spring cleaner is the primary source of rune ore in the game and hugely valuable because of that. That will no longer be true, so it will lose a bit of its use and a bit of its value, but we've tried to add new options to it so that it is still worth having. It's just not as worth having as it was. Awesome. Anything else you want to chime in? Or? Uh, what have we got? Uh, some people are asking to see the female armour. Is that one Bernie can talk female about? Female armour? Um, what? Uh, the female, is it like a female? <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. We'll be male and female. Yeah. 
do we have any to show, or is that no, not? No, okay, we fine. don't have anything. Presumably, it won't look massively different. It'll just be shaped to fit the female. Yeah, character. exactly. Yeah. But we wouldn't like add a massive boob plate to it or something. No. Right. <laughs> All right. Let's come back to you, Neil. We'll come on to Clumsy in a few minutes. So, what have we just done in the meantime? Yeah. So, I suppose the uh, yeah the last bits of uh, concept in and tidying up. Uh, seems to take the longest kind of thing you know because you're putting in like where like little shadows would go or little tanner texture notes for people so you're kind of saying oh you know this is where like the the dust and soot would settle and you're painting in kind of cracks and and little things to kind of sell the idea of um uh, what's, what's the name? wear and tear you know just like because these things these forges although you know they might have been built they would be used and things like that get dirty and dusty so you you can't you've got to imagine them all kind of a little bit gunky they'd be mm -hmm. in constant use you know so really you'd have like soot about and putting in shadows and stuff but yeah for concepting wise i'd be pretty happy to kind of take these up and and say like oh what do you, should we try out which one or you know make a little three miles so you can actually see whether you want it uh, if you want that kind of thing, or you wanted something that was kind of... The thing is, I think when you make something, can you put it in the game, it's kind of... Sometimes the answer comes from doing that, and it's like, oh, it's really obvious, like, oh, why didn't you put in, like, a little kind of holder thing there, or why didn't you put, um, you know, this and that in, but a lot of the answers come up when you're doing it, so it's um, it's a tricky question to answer, because really, a lot of the answers will come from the process itself, it kind of gives itself, it, the, the answers come out of, of, of when you're doing it. So um, yeah, I can kind of just kind of you can just kind of go in and render forever with with uh, rendering, but I tend I tend not to. I tend to, I probably wouldn't go much further than I have now, but you know just to kind of show that you can, you can just kind of keep going and, and uh, maybe do another little design on the side of how you'd want the the forge to kind of anyway, another alternative design for the forge. But, um, yeah, it's good. It's good. All right. It's good. I'm just kind of pulling in. Yeah, people have noticed that it looks much better. Obviously, uh, just from uh, obviously a time perspective already, yeah, how you, much it's you, come along. If you zoom out, it's kind of like, oh yeah, I can see that that would be that would fit, and it looks dwarven, and it would kind of. I wouldn't think it's concept, room. honestly. It looks incredible. But then and when you, when you yeah. zoom in, it's like a mucky mess yeah, of, yeah. <laughs> of lines and stuff. But that's you know that's the point really. It's not a tight thing. It's not a 3D render. It's just it's just to kind of give people uh, the gist. Of like a stone, fluted kind of uh, furnace building um, that is being used for this and that. I think I could give it a little effects pass as well because I think that's probably quite a nice thing to do, isn't it? Just to kind of show what what you'd do. So if I'd, I'd literally just create another layer, I'll call it FX, and then I would start painting in. Um, you can just do like a quick lasso select to kind of grab the areas you want to put in, and then. Just start painting in some some brights, bright lights, just maximum. And then this all here you kind of get like a kind of salmon coloured glow. It's quite good to have some reference open when you're doing this as yeah. well, because um, a lot of the time you're gonna be painting. I, I just you're gonna I, wanna I, I, I find it amazing that you, uh, what you're doing is essentially doing paint blobs, and out of it comes what looks like a model. Basically, <laughs> I just think it's I think it's just insane to be honest with you. I mean, it's incredible just knowing that essentially all these paint blobs you're doing, uh, when obviously refined and everything, when you zoom out, it then looks like a, a full. Yeah, arm. it's that's the trick, really. It's just kind of like figuring out in your head, you know, what do these effects? What will it look like? Kind of thing. Look at what, that. What, what will a fire? What does a fire look like? <laughs> And then, um, oh. you know, because you, you end up painting, you know, like flaming swords and flaming, you know, lots of fiery things. So you can kind of like paint them. And then you can add like a little effect. So you can grab the same layer, duplicate it, or drag it down. And then you can just kind of create like little blurs and things. So you can say blur, Gaussian blur. And it gives it a glow, so you in instant glow. And if you're Ostran, you can <laughs> you can put color dodge on. Wow! And make it like f super flamey, but I don't like to do that. <laughs> That's <laughs> but, um, so good. Yeah, you can put little glows on and drop it underneath, and then you've got like a nice kind of glowy f flame um, really quickly as well. You're just painting in some flame colors and then blur up the bits for the haze. 
and then you can kind of grab some of these kind of pinks and oranges and just kind of bounce them off the off the interior edge of the forge which which gives it more volume as well <laughs> kind of this added effect of Someone said they're a greppy and a chef now. That's an interesting way to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> chef is an artist as well. Yeah, yeah chef artist is an artist. Food. Yeah, I tell you what, I was watching uh, Keith Floyd on food, Floyd on France. That is amazing. Uh, he's doing around France. <laughs> Just anyone out there watching that. Go, go. <laughs> A minute ago, you were worried about plugging things. Yeah, and now yeah. you just full on like advertising. And yeah, <laughs> just advertising the BBC there. No, no also, big, no big deal. Um, yeah, he's he's a hero of mine. Yeah. Shall we? Um, I'm gonna go with the content. Anyway, that's right. Yeah, oh, that's fine. Like, yeah, in yeah, kind yeah, of a nutshell, yeah. like it yeah, looks. in a nutshell, the fire. You can add fire to things, and then you can turn it off and on again. So um, uh, wow. that's off, and then glow and on. <laughs> There you go, yeah. So good. All right, mm -hmm. let's come over to Clumsy. Let's see what he's uh, gotten up to in the time that we have been away. So about half hour. Yeah. What have you been doing? Been mostly doing the teeth. Doing uh, the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And blocking some more proportions, trying to get the shape of the skull better. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. It takes me too much time just trying to figure out like proportions and and such. So um, what I'm gonna I was what I, I was about to do was <laughs> sorry, just duplicating these and bringing them down here and rotating them to make them fit the lower jaw. Yeah, and that's very cool. Pretty much about that. Doesn't look very good, but wham! Yeah. Look at that. So basically, I'm always always sculpting with geometry pretty much until the end, and when I'm getting closer to finish the high poly. I start doing some asymmetry changes, like sp usually in the middle area, because um, that's where you usually notice the symmetry the most. So uh, you want asymmetry in the middle and symmetry on the sides. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much the yeah. guy needs a good dental plan, said someone there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can always appreciate the quirky comments when they come in. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they're, they're, this is um, so the idea of it's just for people um, who uh, want to understand this. Like, essentially, this is kind of somewhat accurate to the normal working day here, Jagex for these guys, yeah. or try to be anyway, because I feel like the best way to kind of show how these guys work is kind of having to be as realistic as possible based on their speed. Yeah. So, um, if you get a little bit motion sick, apologies, but <laughs> this is the speed of uh, a mod clumsy who is able to work magic with this stuff. So, just yeah. be aware of that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's looking great. And obviously, I presume you have your inspiration up in the top right, right? Up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have like all the all the concepts here. I have a second screen with some references from other characters I like, some mm -hmm. other skulls. Uh, for me, it's very important to look at references where I'm working because uh, sometimes you just get too stuck on, on an idea and you end up like forgetting about what other people do. Uh, yeah. So I always like to have other people's work on the second screen to look at while I'm working. So what are the, so we have what, about 15 minutes left. What are you going to look to try and do in the next 15 minutes? So I'm going to try and head the spikes around the, spikes. the shield. All right. uh, the spikes on the skull. Try and finish these teeth and yeah, and that's pretty much it. I still mm -hmm. need to adjust the overall proportions a little bit, but yeah. Um, to answer someone's question, when I'm not sure if we could do a weekly art stream. It is a little bit of a time resource, unfortunately. <laughs> and also we need to kind of ask the art leads if we can do it. I don't think they'd appreciate us just taking some of the art guys downstairs to stream um, the stuff. Although it would be awesome. Um, yeah. We kind of need to double check with teams to make sure it's all good. So we try and do these where possible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, how is the program compared to the last 3D program you people at Jagex use? I think you joined when we were already yeah, on. Yeah, we were already what, work, working. What about with. you, Neil? Yeah, yeah, we used Jagex. That was like the original, the original, original tool. That was like 14 yeah. years ago. I'm one of the lucky guys. Yeah. So, yeah. sorry, you've just to clarify, how long have you been at Jagex? Yeah, since 2004. Since 2004. So you've been yeah. through all of the art styles, give I've, or take. Yeah, pretty much. How's yeah. it been transitioning? Yeah, it's been it's been really good. I mean, to to this level now, where you can use uh, normal mats from ZBrush, that is, you know, that's really cool that we yeah. come. It's to see it come from like, literally, the, the the original one was clicking on a left top and front screen, to like get um, you know, make a one triangle, and then from that to like with no undo and stuff to to, you know, proper, 
industry standard tools is, is fantastic. It's really yeah. nice to have seen it, you know, and been involved in it from, from that, from that, you know, from, from all over the, all those years. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Just to clarify, if you get a message from someone on stream, call RuneScape Giveaways, give them the swift block, they're a load of nonsense. We don't have an account called RuneScape Giveaways, it's phishing, ignore it, and uh, yeah, the only giveaways you'll get technically are our Lootscape Giveaways, which you do at the end of this stream, only on twitch.tv slash RuneScape, so uh, be aware of that. Um, someone said it's fantastic and watching you do it, uh, I agree, it's pretty Thanks. awesome to watch it. <laughs> Uh, what about a time-lapse split-screen video every now and then? Half an overhead view and half yeah, an Yeah, that's hour. actually a good idea. I think mm. I think I did that for Solak initially. I think I, I recorded most of the progress. But because the design changed so much, I, we ended up never uh, releasing it, I think. But it's a, it's a good idea, time-lapsing. So, spikes, I assume, are coming out. This shield looks awesome. Oh, yep, yeah, I'm angry. going for the spikes already. So There we go. Okay, let me see. My brush is all okay. Yeah, it's been. A, I usually work in a Cintiq as Neil does, but I didn't want to carry mine downstairs. They're quite heavy. That's completely, <laughs> really, that's completely really fair. Heavy. That's completely uh, mine fair. is even smaller than his, but it, it, it broke my. I don't back even know how much that thing weighs. <laughs> So essentially, you're making the spike spikes using a sphere. Right? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. There's, there's I'm a... gonna ask really obvious questions, by the way, because this is all no, no, like, that's totally fine. Like, my mind. The cool thing about ZBrush is that you have like a million ways to do different things. You can you can do the same thing in like ten different ways, and you just pick up whatever, you just choose whatever you want and you, whatever you think it feel, fits better in your pipeline. I think for me, I I always work with primitives. This is not even the best primitive because it has this. <laughs> really weird thing going on here mm. in the geometry, but uh, I don't really care because I can always change that later. Uh, Is that banana again? Yeah, it's the, the banana. banana. <laughs> yeah, the banana's the banana got a, ba banana, No, no, it's just the oh, banana right. on there. Banana's <laughs> got a bit of a running say. theme, it seems. Yeah. I saw some, some players were joking that one of these models has more polys than the whole of old school. <laughs> Oh yeah, which which I think is meant as a facetious oh, yeah. joke. But these, are, these exactly are like it was to actually brought up as a joke last week by a certain yeah. mod. Um, oh my goodness, I've had a complete brain fart. It was brought up by someone as a joke last. Oh, yeah. mod, mod Alex, mod Alex actually said the same thing literally as a joke. So, <laughs> but it's uh, but it's, it's almost it's it's very nearly true. Uh, yeah. Someone was said there's a model in development at the moment. That I think is secret, but it's. It actually does have more, that one model has more polys than the whole of all. Wow. We, were, we were quite strict on um, RuneScape yeah. from 2004. Yeah. It was 500 for a, for a character. So and, 500 and, polys and, just for a character? Yeah, and, and mostly under. Like the, wow. abys the abyssal creature I did, I think, was 500 on the nose. And that was like, I was really proud to get like six limbs on a five triangle. <laughs> 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 I was like, six limbs. What are we looking limbs. at nowadays for RuneScape then? Uh, so it really depends on the characters again. because it, it, So if the character is going to be on, a, on his area alone and there's not going to be like different instances of him, you can go a bit crazy. Like Solak, we went with around 11k triangles, which is insane for RuneScape. 11,000 triangles. Okay. Yeah, something like that, which is around like 5.5k polys. It, it, it's it's not a lot, um, but like for this kind of player kit stuff, we can't go higher than one k okay. uh, usually. Yeah, some NPCs are around five k, four k. Yeah, but yeah, but for boss NPCs, we always go a bit. We give them the special. Yeah, the special we give them the special. Special, yeah. especially. It, it also depends on the size. So if the, if the NPC is gonna be too big, we definitely need more polygons, more texture size, more textures itself. Like. So yeah, Solak is definitely a good example. He's is the most high poly character, I think I did. Um, yeah, Marathel is, is as low. I think she doesn't have that many polygons. Uh, Barrel chest is quite the same as well. Mm. Probably is closer to Solak or something. Yeah, yeah. It really depends on the size of the character, but we do have a bit more freedom now, which is which is good. So obviously it's spikes uh, going on. So we were at what one? I see. I, I can't yeah, count properly. Just it one twelve spike, spikes yeah, in total. Like, yeah. One I think it's twelve. So we just need to make one side. Just need to make one side, and then we'll mirror to the other. Oh, which is pretty cool. Nice uh, bit of time saving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. So just to clarify, this is for the Necromium Shield, yeah. uh, which is tier. Seventy, tier seventy. Yep, and uh, the concept itself. This is the upgraded version, which is called the passports, I believe. Yeah. yeah. The um, the reason there's two versions of everything 
in, so in the rework, you can upgrade armor, but you can upgrade it multiple times. So Elder Rune can be upgraded five times, for example. Yep. But what we, the thing is, all the intermediate upgrade steps are kind of only there for training purposes. So it didn't really make sense to have a whole different uh, model for each upgrade step. So what we agreed as a compromise was we'd have sort of the most upgraded version would look different, and then all the others would look like the first version. So that's why there's two for all, for all types. That probably, we probably won't be redoing Rune and Below. Awesome. So there'll only be one look for Rune, but then from Oracle come onwards, there'll be an upgraded version of each item. So if it's mainly to focus on the new stuff then, yeah. really? Yeah, that's yeah. fair. We're rebalancing the low-tier stuff, but... Um, but not model-wise. We're not remodeling it. No. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so again, just clash some said what program we're using. This is ZBrush. Yeah, ZBrush, yeah. <laughs> and I'm using a Wacom Intuos to, to sculpt. It's pretty good. Uh, I only started using a Cintiq when I when I started at Jagex. I, honestly, I think I only got my Cintiq here uh, probably around Christmas or so. I've been using uh, Intuos all my life, and it's pretty good. Cintiqs are, are really good as well, obviously, but they're quite expensive. But I think Intuos does the job very well. Someone said, can we see a side-by-side -side comparison of the skull and block besides what he's created so we can see the progress? I don't know if you're able to do that. Of what? The initial stage? The initial stage or the, or the concept art? Uh, don't, we'll wait for Forbesy to answer us. So the initial stage or the concept art? So uh, then we can try and see what we can do for you. Um, so Rune and Advent will look exactly like they do now after the rework. Just to clarify. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, they are still upgradable. Mechanically, you'll be able to upgrade them. So plus one, yeah. etc. Okay, cool. Exactly. Yeah. But, but they won't look different. So I actually have a time lapse of all... Uh, that's the cool thing about Superrush is that... So you have a time lapse, just let, say. Just let me save it. I don't know, I saved the 77 file. That's cool. Um, yeah, you have a time lapse here of like... Uh, just let me... Yeah, no problem. You have like a time lapse of the oh, cult. There you go. Look at so that's just, this is what the skull started with. Yeah, this there is what it started. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And then you can just see, <laughs> just it's it looks it's so cool. And then and same the thing for the shield. The shield itself. Look at that! How it's become from a blob essentially to yeah. just that. That is amazing. <laughs> wow. Cool and the teeth as well maybe. Oh, tie up to the teeth. Oh. <laughs> there you go, the wine pan. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah Zebra is definitely. That is so cool. It's really cool. <laughs> okay, okay, the fact we were just able to show before and after. Even for that people so that cool. are like obvious and they, I mean, it's it's amazing. It's definitely a pretty tasty tool. That's so cool. Right, um, I'm going to come up to Mod Neil, and then we'll come over to you for one last time to yep, see how you're cool. on the spikes. So we'll come back up to Mod Neil, and we'll come over to Clumsy for one final time, nice. and then we'll be able to wrap up. All right. Yeah. Ooh, Jesus, as I try not to break everything behind me. Um, I, I literally, yeah, I'm just putting on effects and things because it's it's quite a nice thing to do. So uh, uh, yeah, what have you done here? Um, I've just been putting on these kind of like blue flame again, just like FX layers, so they're just kind of you know fire on, fire off, and then yeah, you can you can come in and I'm just gonna just have a bit of fun with some uh, particle brushes and things because you there's some cool stuff in Photoshop too. So if I find a, a cool brush, you have to make these. But uh, this is like, uh, so if you know, like you had embers by a fire, so you can kind of put in little embers that float about. Yeah. Um, or if you wanted smoke to come off the chimneys, if you wanted some kind of like magical blue smoke, or like that. so I could make some these little layers, maybe intensify them a bit. I'm not sure if that looks like bubbles or water. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> don't quite like that. But you know, you can muck about with things. Um, I think. Usually I'll probably just paint them in just to see what kind of like you get the odd kind of like flicker of It's my default brush my brush I use for everything because I think embers kind of have a little bit of a direction to them don't they this they can't really be a circle so yeah. um, They kind of and blue embers aren't really a thing that people are used to seeing so you kind of more like You'd see you know like a, th a thing ping down the step and then just kind of like scatter across the floor which would be quite cool you just kind of catch the little bit of light that it did. I think it's when you think when you paint something, you're like, oh, I, that doesn't work, or you know, you, you've got to go through the process of thinking why doesn't it work, and and then kind of trying to figure out, oh, actually, it doesn't work because it doesn't create the shape that I wanted, or it doesn't do the the thing that I wanted. 
And now I can use cheeky smoke brushes. <laughs> cheeky smoke brushes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's keep that one. Um, let's remember that one, shall we? Cheeky smoke. Um, well, I clouds. I don't, I don't know who made these. I'm, I, definitely clouds too. I, I stole off someone. And I think it's clouds one. Not sure if I stole that off anyone. <laughs> <laughs> it might be mine. It might be. And then, and then, so with this brush, it's very soft. So you, you, all you're doing is you're basically just kind of pushing like. Little oh, so to simulate of, the smoke coming out. Yeah, of it. yeah. just it's like a kind of particle thing. And if I go into the brush settings, all it's doing is it's got this little scatter function on, and then that will take the brush tip, which is a cloud shape, and just you know reproduce it in different angles. Quite a simple thing, but it's really nice because you can use colour with it. So you can say like uh, once you lock the layer transparency, you can say that. I want it to be this kind of like blue coming up through it, oh. and then it goes. Yeah, so it's That's nice, isn't it? Nice, it's satisfying. That's so satisfying to watch. <laughs> and then um, yeah, so you have got like smoke basically. I and love then, how you've then, made it obviously very bright at the bottom to indicate the start of it, but then obviously transitioned into just yeah, the smoke. it becomes That's so it cool. becomes sooty, sweeping suit becomes soot. Yeah, yeah, at the top, and then um, yeah, you can just lock transparency and grab a blue that you've used, and then just kind of like. Just put it in there, and it just, it's just a nice little subtle thing. But these little effects kind of can help sell the idea of like, you know, the one on the right looks more exciting than the one on the left now because it's got the smoke coming out the top and it's looking a bit more alive, like it's moving. Whereas um, that one's kind of grander because it's bigger on the piece of paper. And um, I don't know, but I've kind of started to like the design of the this orange one better. Mm, especially it seems with the, a bit grander. I, I think it's yeah. it's definitely more grander, but I I blows my mind how much an effect can do to that. Yeah, like, again, like if it, it just turn it off again, just to show like the difference it makes with just the effects off. I mean, just, there you are. But then obviously when we turn them back on, it's just I just find yeah. that incredible. It sells the idea of like it's a furnace, doesn't it? You, you definitely need the fire on to, to, to say that um, it'd be hard to do a kind of off furnace uh, that looks nice. But um, you can, yes, but you could still do it. You could probably do, make more of the door and then like have cool designs for the doorways and things like that. But um, yeah, I, I'm pretty happy with these. That concepts. is absolutely so I'll, I'll leave it, I'll awesome. Leave it there, you make it green, Neil. So yeah, it someone wants like a green, green one. I can make it green, yeah, because it's all on layers now, and I just combine Let's these have a layers. Look. Let us know what you think, chat, when you, uh, when you see this. Yeah, that, they're on one layer. Let's just cycle through colours because it's just fun yeah, to do. Yeah, let's have a look. Let's go. They're both going to change colour now. I'll move this out of the way. Let's try to move my hand, but I realise you can't see my hand, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, there you go. Oh, and then wow. Green. Why not? Ah, that's <laughs> Let's just go so all good. That's pink. More of a, emerald, pink. emerald green and pink. <laughs> There's a red. A that blood, green blood, and purple is so good. And then we'll go back to like oh, it's a turquoise and a, and a kind of horrible pink. And then lovely magic pink and magic green. Wow. Look at that. Blue and yellow. Yeah, God, so you, I love that. You can, Holy you can muck moly. about, and you can do that for hours. I mean, you, the best thing about the, the hue thing, this is a nice little thing, because not many people know about this, is in here, this little drop down is just the specific colour. So if I just wanted to change the yellow, I can just edit yellow. So <sighs> if I wanted to change the middle of the fire, which is really like a lovely thing to be able to do. And I don't know, I didn't find out about this for years. I'm sure loads of people know about it. But I <laughs> I, it's kind of relatively recently discovered this thing. That you can actually select the colour channel itself and change it, which is a, a That is way. absolutely superb. Good, wow. Good fun way of doing something. But yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the, wow. the, the furnaces. And, you know. Thank you so yeah. much, Neil. That is yeah. incredible. Right. I want to come over to more clumsy, and that will finish up the art section. Then we'll come over to the couch to wrap up. So, uh... How are we looking on those spikes, sir? Oh yeah, I'm I'm just about to. Oh, good timing. Oh, please take one of the last spikes here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they they obviously need need more work. But, yeah. Uh, okay, let's see how this goes now. Let me save it because ZBrush is. If you use ZBrush, you'll know that it crashes a lot every time I try to mirror stuff. Uh, oh, there you go. Cool. Yeah, that's pretty much. Uh, okay, basically my next step will be just try to make these spikes look more like spikes, not bananas or blobs <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> that's you, not easy, is it? That is actually no, that's crazy. not easy. That's yeah, not that's easy the same thing, thing for whenever you sculpt fur. It always mm. looks like bananas. Mm. It's, yeah. <laughs> Someone said more clumsy brush. <laughs> Very good. Oh man. So there you go. There's your spikes. Yeah, I also need to make these look like they're actually 
going inside the shield. So I'll probably have a bit more volume here around these shapes or something like that. And yeah, you're putting in the um, little exaggerations there that give it its character. Yeah, so yeah. you can do the concept is just a zo like a fairly zoomed out. Yeah, like yeah. this is the idea, but you know when you get into it, it's actually you are seeing it in the round all the time. You're constantly spinning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it that feel of like a real object. Exactly. So just clarify about in-game models. They're in, but we're not going to share them until Modjack is ready to share them. As well uh, as they're, they're, they're not currently working properly in game. So yeah. We'll, so we'll they're tweet out some there. screenshots as soon as we have them. There you yeah, go. Yeah. Um, just to clarify, because someone thought we were going to show it on stream. Not unfortunately today. Would be awesome, but I won't be able to, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, Tom got them working, but he's on holiday now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> holiday. <laughs> yep. Uh, scourge of projects. Um, someone's asked a bit of a question. Have you ever forgot to save a project and lost a lot of progress? Oh man, yeah. Like yeah? so many times. Ugh. Especially ZBrush. This new version of ZBrush actually is able to recover when it crashes. Okay. Sometimes. Sometimes, but, naturally. Yeah, sometimes you get so caught up in the project, you start sculpting, sculpt for one hour, sculpt for two hours, and then ZBrush just crashes. Oh, and you're God. like, you, seriously, you just want to cry. And punch your monitor. <laughs> yeah, understandable. Yeah, yeah. I can completely understand this that. This happened to me like pixie, pixie. multiple times. It's really, really annoying. But yeah, it's part of the deal. Yeah. But they fixed it. Okay, I, good. I think, yeah. I you think, think? I think so. Oh, man. Thinking is, At least. can be very dangerous. <laughs> Did we want to mention the Discord again? Uh, yeah, let's, uh, we'll, we'll pop the Discord in the Twitch chat. If you haven't been on it already, cool. there's a special Mind and Smithing Discord section. When you, yeah, when you get on, you have to type exclamation mark M ampersand S, and that will give you permission to view the Discord, the, the Mind and Smithing channels. And then you can deal with talking to Mod Jack and Mods too. Yeah, we haven't been checking it because we've been on the stream, but <laughs> <laughs> when I get home, I'll have a read of what everyone's You're going to be a viewer. I reckon you guys will be tagged a lot. I have a feeling. Yep. So I will wait and see. So my phone's off, so uh, I've no idea how many notifications I've got. There so you got go. asked if you had an art station, uh, Bernardo. Oh, an art station, yeah. Do you yeah. have an art station? Oh, yeah, I do. Uh, we can probably... I'll, yeah, just follow me on Twitter. Uh, sometimes I put... Uh, Jagged's some, Clumsy, I presume? Yeah, Jagged's Clumsy, yep. yeah. I usually post my Skytrap links there, art station, and... Yeah, and all the, all the updates. <clears throat> Yeah, art station. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just people pronounce. People are trying to mimic the way I say it because yeah. this is a thing. You see, anything to do with a and then yeah. like arc and so on. Everyone, you'll see in a moment. Everyone will impersonate the way I say it in the chat. Yeah, That's what they do. Um, but yeah, I think in a nutshell, I mean, we'll leave it at that. I guess, and even though I don't want this to end, I really yeah. don't want this to end. This is still gonna take like a couple more hours to finish. Yeah, but I'll I'll definitely post the, the all the progress. Everyone, it looks really nice. The Everyone yes, doing yeah. it. Cool. Oh, someone's found your art station, so someone shared it there. So yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I'll definitely yeah I'll definitely share the, pro yeah. the all the progress on my Twitter account if you guys want to follow. Awesome. Oh, uh, I got I got to say it's FUC's is art station as well. That's my art. Station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can also share Mod Neil's art station. Put it on your Twitter, sir. Oh yeah, yeah. Do Twitter. you have Twitter? Yeah. The power I do have of Twitter. Twitter. I do have Twitter. Oh man. All right. So I'm gonna say, uh, unfortunately, from the art, uh, from the concept and animation perspective, um, we are gonna animation. Sorry, concept and modeling. Yeah. There yeah. we go. Got it right. Um, we're gonna have to leave it there, unfortunately. But this has been two hours of uh, kick-ass stuff. This has been so good. So thank you, guys. Yeah. In the chat. Um, please, please give your thank yous to Mod Neil and Clumsy. For this and let them know what, um, how appreciative you are of this stream and uh, while I get ready to go over to the couch they'll see awesome. all the love thanks guys thank you guys thank so you much. much amazing it's good fun oh yeah. that's cool <laughs> such an active movement today goodness all right I'm gonna anger, Hi, I'm gonna anger shed again with incredible do clip. it properly clip. no I'm not doing it properly because the stream's <sighs> gonna be ended in a moment higher put it higher higher there we're gonna go there Right, so yeah, um, I love art streams, and I think what a what a way to uh, show off what's going on in mine and smithing because that was absolutely awesome. Um, they're exhausted, bless them. <laughs> They've been obviously so in the zone that uh, they're just like, oh my god, I can breathe now. We're okay. It's, seriously, you guys are absolutely awesome. So thank you so much for that. Um, in a nutshell, before we try and um, 
before we finish up, um, you mentioned Discord as a way of feedback. But I mean, is there any other ways these, uh, for everyone who's watched the stream, how can I give you the feedback you guys need? Uh, yeah, Discord's best if you want to like actually chat about something. If you want to ask a question, have it answered immediately. Uh, Discord or Twitter are good for that. Yep. Uh, Twitter's not so good for a discussion. Because More just uh, a point, I guess, yeah, exactly. making a point, yeah. yeah. If you want to make, ask a specific question you want a concrete answer to, just tweet it. Tweet it. Yep. Discord's good if you want to chat. Um, Reddit's good when there's something recent, but obviously stuff stuff gets lost on Reddit fairly quickly. Yep. And then the forums, if it's for a long, our forums, if it's for a long forum, a like long discussion, that's going to carry on. We try to be active on everything. Awesome. I kind of feel bad for you guys because we kind of left you on the couch for most of this. <laughs> I'm, I feel That's really fine. bad. That's fine. We got to watch art. Uh, I, yeah, it's just, just awesome. Um, but I think apart from that, Unfortunately, that's going to bring us to the end. Uh, ironically, dead on two hours, so not bad, not bad at all. Yeah. We started at about 4, uh, 4.07, 4 8 p.m. It's now 6 8 p.m., so uh, not bad at all. Um, as promised, provided nothing bad happens to me, I will fire out two loot crates at the end of this, so uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, Lootscape. I think I see the CEO coming to uh, <laughs> Mod Pips is on the way. Uh, so yeah, we're going to fire out uh, two of them, one for uh, animation and one for modeling. That's my excuse, so enjoy it. Kind of like a thank you to you guys just sticking through us through the stream so uh yeah thank you so much for that but apart from that one of a note to mention um patch notes teasers are coming back so uh i'm gonna be doing the patch notes teasers again on friday uh at 4 p.m game time uh, i used to do them a lot later but the reason for that is because of travel uh which kind of plays a factor on late night streams now so uh patch notes, patch notes patch note teasers uh, are coming back on Friday um, and I'll be going through the Karamjan Idols content uh, some of it not all of it don't want to spoil too much uh, but also going through uh, some of the updates you can expect on next Monday's update so hopefully you'll enjoy that as well as always Lootscape will be enabled for that also but not I'm not giving away two for that one there's only one stream there so apart from that thank you guys so much I think it's safe to say again very hyped for mine and smithing which is what we love to see and uh, hopefully we've tried to answer how much as we can but apart from that thank you so much for joining us take care and have a good one cheers bye